yeah. Also, <laughs> That's true. Got done. Shall we? Let's. All right. Let's go. Hey, I'm very excited to be here. My name is I'm Liam Jazzyhands. I have been the storyteller for three seasons of Into the Motherlands on Twitch. Very excited to be here. Um, why don't we, uh, let's go real quick, and why don't you all introduce who you are, and right now just tell us uh, your characters' names so we can start hearing those things so I can start remembering them. Uh, and then we'll do proper introductions for your characters after. Let's start over there. No, you, yeah. No, start over there. Yeah. Okay, let's start with Dave. Dave. Start with a me. And a me. Uh, me, Dave Walters. I say words about things. I'm. I can project. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, lead designer of Into the Motherlands, and this is the first time that I'm getting to actually play it. So uh, I apologize in advance <laughs> because we're working on the next edition, and I got in my head how things are going to work. So yeah. now I'm like, wait, how they used to work? So yeah, if I fumble around, I apologize, and I will be playing. Jamgali. Doug? Hey, I'm Tanya DePass. I'm the creator and creative director of Into the Motherlands. Uh, I convinced these fine folks on stage to come along with me on this journey. Some in a more permanent sense of making the game and some just hanging out with us, getting to play today. Uh, you can find me, obviously, on uh, my own channel. We're live now, so let's say hi to the internet. And um, also I get to play on Thursdays with me, Dave Walters, on... Um, Black Dice Society on Thursdays, we're coming back for another session, and I get to play on Sundays with Eugenio uh, on Rob's Party. We are doing our 11th season, and we are actually going to finish our 11th season at Pax Unplugged, so if you're going to that too, come to Pax Unplugged and see us finish that out. Other side of the country. Markia. Hey, uh, I'm Markia McCarty. I am a uh, voiceover actor and uh, TTRPG player. I'm also the marketing manager for Hunters Entertainment. Uh, they're the ones that brought you Alice's music. Hey. Uh, yeah, uh, my, my show Something Scary is on YouTube. If you love horror, go ahead and check that out. I'm the narrator and producer for that. Uh, this will be the second time ever that I'm using this system. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad that I have a basically all the creators of uh, Into the Motherlands here <laughs> to help me out with that. Uh, and I am playing, uh, I'm going to say this wrong, Monsagene. Mm -hmm. Playing a Monsagene, which is a synthetic person, uh, artificial mm -hmm. intelligence. Uh, and her name is Wixen Koju. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Last but certainly not least. Hi, I'm Gabe Hicks, uh, cosplayer, voice actor, game designer. I'm creator producer of Roll20. And I work on Into the Motherlands for world building, mechanics, and some of the production. Um, and today I am playing Benlock. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. I realized I didn't say who I was playing. Oh, it's, it's who are you playing, Tanya? Yeah. Oh my god. Who are you, who are you playing? Uh, I am reprising my character, Invicta, from the uh, show that we did on my channel. I just got nervous and just started talking. So sorry. <laughs> people have to keep track of. Uh, well, you didn't mention Invicta, I didn't mention G4, we're just all sloppy. Great. But look, G4. Hey. <laughs> hey. Product placement. Um, so since Tony is playing Invicta, everything that happens today is canon, unless Invicta dies, and then it's not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. <laughs> I know it all. <laughs> It's possible. Wow. Uh, this would be a good thing. How many of you all, we are small but mighty, and I appreciate you all. How many of you all have seen uh, the stream show? Have seen any of our fantastic, love it? Some of you have it, some of you have that is the perfect split. Um, for those of you who have seen us on Twitch, you'll recognize some uh, NPCs and things like that, and the style. And for those of you who haven't, I will do my best to uh, make sure that anything that you have no reason to know, we explain. Uh, the only other last thing before we get started playing that I wanted to do is let all of you that are here in the room and all of you watching online know uh, just a couple of content warnings. There's going to be some light body horror. Uh, a lot of this adventure is going to be set, uh, or uh, about a third of this adventure will be set underwater. So if you have some sort of drowning things, heads up. Um, and I think that, don't worry about it. And I think <laughs> that's, yeah. <laughs> we talked about the filming thing yesterday. It's gonna shoot down. Um, yeah, so that. So uh, if we're all ready, let's do it. Let's, uh, let's go back to the motherlands. Here we go. So the three of you who are not in Victa, uh, have been working for, for some time for an organization called Torch. Torch is a sort of mm, peacekeeping, but also uh, mutual aid and sort of like an NGO, right, in our world today. Um, and they 
uh, have sort of arms and agents and everything all over uh, the planet of Fatoa, where we find ourselves. Uh, the three of you have been working uh, for Torch for some time. And you've done a few missions together, a few missions apart. You're not a set team, but you were all called together today uh, to meet with one of the majors of Torch, uh, a fairly high up individual in the ranks named Major Rafia. And Major Rafia has brought you all to the top of Torch Tower to one of the conference rooms, gorgeous alabaster circular room with an enormous hollow table in the center. And uh, the three of you arrived and not long after you got there, not entirely sure what it is that Major Rafia has planned for you, uh, you are joined by a fourth member of your team, uh, a high and old walks in, and some of you may be familiar with Invicta. Invicta was a part of a team that recently has sort of um, made headlines, if you will. Invicta's team uh, discovered that there were two fairly pressing threats to the planet of Vitoa. One of them was a group of mysterious machines that they had been tr tracking all over the galaxy, trying to figure out who they were, why they had come to, to Vitoa. And uh, at the end of season three of our show, they discovered that in fact, these mysterious machines were the tools of a group of people that come from a strange faraway planet called Earth. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Invicta was a part of that team, and they have only just recently returned Brief Torch on the updates, and most of the rest of the team has gone off for some shore leave. But Major Rafio asked Invicta if she wouldn't mind going on one other mission with the three of you. So the three of you find yourself, or the four of you now, find yourselves together here in the conference room at the top of Torch Tower. And can we go down and let folks know uh, what we see in this room? And I'm going to start with you, because you made a start with me, Dave, on the intro. That's fine, I accept that. Um, you see a figure that looks like they are half plant, half man. There is moss coming down off their head in twirls with vines. Down their arm is what looks to be like a spiraling bloom of roses that have a purple color to them. Uh, they have a half mask that almost looks like it's a large leaf coming out from their chin uh, up to their nose. And coming along with them looks to be almost a wolf-like creature mixed with that of a Venus flytrap uh, staying close to their hip. And the mask comes down, and there's a large, almost mildly concerning grin on their face. And they just look around, curious, but excited. Uh, Wixen is a humanoid uh, type figure, uh, fully purple, different shades of purple, uh, kind of like a, a vitiligo uh, going across uh, her body. Uh, she's a, a shide. And uh, there is like tattooed, it's like a great features uh, going um, all throughout uh, on her face and down her body. Her, her skin uh, does rippling effects. And it seems like almost when she's like bored or anything like that, uh, all of a sudden there is a, uh, a, her hand becomes a large stabbing weapon. Uh, and then retracts back into a uh, hand, um, or she'll uh, in a, like pop out of her side, like a, you know, it's like a ching, like an iron ball kind of thing, and then it'll it go back in. Uh, and uh, she has a like riotous, horsey hair uh, that's going around her face, and it, at times it seems like it's moving. And like it might be able to grab someone uh, <laughs> if it wanted to. Uh, she's uh, looking at the conference table and she's like rapping on it. I'm, I'm, this is this is quite a becoming room. Why have we not been invited to this before? Unplanned. Um, Bainla uh, walks to Wixen and is Wixen. I got a new toy. Would you like to see it? Of course, I always love to see your toys. That's a weird sentence. Um, <laughs> and the vine actually tightens and shoots forward to be a long, like, piercing wrist blade. Oh, new shiny, I enjoy. Yeah, okay, now it's weird, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. uh, for those in the room, you see a very tall hy hyena-looking type um, femme character. She's got tawny 
fur with brown spots. So in mind, kind of an earth leopard, but you know, it's very blended in, but she's got a long shock of red hair that is currently braided. She's in her torch uniform, so she looks very proper, I guess is the word. But unlike most high all, because they're the scientists, there's, they're the teachers, they're kind of the, the smarty pants of our world. Um, she is very much the warrior. She has a sword strapped to her back. It's very ornate from what you can see. And even though she's in Torch headquarters, the sword does not leave her side. And, you know, it is hers and hers alone, kind of like in a full metal jacket, this is my sword. There's none other like it. And, you know, she's tall, you know, an earth measurement, she'd be close to six feet. And she's just kind of leaning against a wall, watching the others in the room and keeping an eye on Major Rafia because their interactions have been interesting, shall we say. It's a good word. Uh, last, uh, Shuja Mkali sits at the table looking vaguely bored. Uh, <laughs> wow. <Energy> and stream. <laughs> he is I'm like, would you like me to be more edge lord? Yeah, like, well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe <it's here. laughs> uh, he's got a long gauntlet that goes all the way up from, it is fingerless, but it goes up from his hands all the way up to his elbows with a spike on the end of each one that is uh, made out of metal. How did we all do this without talking? Yeah, about? really? Because <laughs> we're all on brand. That's, That's what yeah, we well. we're, you're know what we're going to do. Yeah, we understood uh, the assignment. He's got dark skin, but along each of his veins, there is a golden light because he's a Misajai, he's a hybrid person, but across his and he's got long uh, dreadlocks with um, shells and rocks and things from strange places all moving into his dreads except on the right side of his face is blasted all the way down to like almost stark white but has gold rimming all through it like basically a massive explosion went off right in his face and his eye is gold because of it and all the hair over there is gone and he just turns and says weed son apparently we have a chaperone this time i think <laughs> motions towards invicta i don't know do you need one looks at the commander and he's like, it depends on who you ask. It is not collateral damage if no one survives. What? Oh. We get the mission done. On occasion, there is not much less after, but who can say? And that, that is why I've brought you all. Also, an image that Invicta, you have seen before. It is, uh, you see sort of an ocean, a vast ocean appear on top of this table and right from the center of the table rises up an enormous, what looks sort of like a, a squid, really, uh, but at the far end of it, you can see as it sort of angles up towards the air, you can see that in fact it is that enormous sort of uh, anti-aircraft cannon that you and your team watched last your ship from the sky just months before. So please tell me I'm getting revenge on that ship. And uh, one of Major Rafia's rare, to call it a smile is generous, uh, curling of one corner of one side of her mouth. Uh, and she nods at you, Invicta, and says, that, that is not the goal of this mission. But yes, yes, I think this might be an opportunity for you to get closure. closure. So closure being revenge is what you're saying. She thinks for a minute, uh, and as, as always, this is one of those times, this is why I asked who had seen the show. So Major Rafia, for those of you who are not aware, is also uh, a Monsagene. She is also uh, a synthetic person, and uh, she is tall and has, Monsagene do not, uh, they wear damage to their ceramic form as badges of honor. They generally, particularly on their face, do not repair damage that is caused in missions, in battle, in whatever, to their face. And she has one very long uh, sort of crack in her faceplate down here. And you can always sort of tell when she is thinking about what she should say next, because there's just a slight bit of movement that you can sort of see as the gears literally turn behind her faceplate. And so she pauses for a minute when you, when you say that, Invicta, and she nods at you but chooses not to respond in words, and then turns again to the rest of you. She did not say no, though. 
I just tap the handle of my sword and I look at you and I'm like, you, you got me. She slightly angles towards the other two and then remembers who else is on the team and just turns back center. <laughs> what are you going to do the blade to a ship? She says, well, the gun itself that you see here is not, is not the goal of your mission. Rather, it is what is below. While the crew of the Sphere, along with Invicta, was scouting the galaxy for information about the mysterious machines that landed on our shores at Mandira, as you are aware, Invicta, another crew was sent to investigate the threat of the Hapalox. And she calls up another image, and you all see, again, Invicta, you've seen all this before because it's footage from your journeys. Uh, you see several creatures appear on this table, squid-like in form, with rows and rows of chromatophores, of, of light and color-emitting cells, uh, all up and down, uh, flashing in various colors and various patterns. Um, and there is also, that comes up on the table, a ship similarly shaped to the Apollox, but obviously a spacefaring ship. Um, and she continues, we sent a team, a team to discover more about these mysterious creatures that reside here on our very planet, in our very oceans. The team made, made initial reports, and then contact was lost not long after. We have some locational information about where they were last or last found. But beyond that, we have no idea what happened to them. We need the four of you to get answers. We have chosen you three, and she indicates, again, not in victim. Because as you have said, have said, you get the job done. In victim. I have asked, I have asked you to join the crew because you are the only member, active member of Torch who has any experience with the Hapalogs. And that may come in handy. We have arranged for our contact in Mandira at the Kusili Oceanographic Research Facility, a high knoll by the name of Yaktor, to meet you all and provide you all with equipment to then go out, examine whatever it was that our team found, and hopefully find them. Your priorities for this mission are to discover the fate of the squad, rescue any survivors if possible, recover any data that they did collect while they were there, and most importantly of all, and she looks very carefully at each of you, to return in one piece. You all are a valuable team. You mean alive, yes. Say it. <laughs> you mean alive, yes. Uh, yes. I, I can exist in many different pieces and still be alive. I cannot. What you know? I am still very organic. I would like to remind you, Major Rafia. Rafia looks at each of you and sort of uh, does not sigh because she is a Monsagene, but looks at each of you in turn and says, Yes, uh, uh, yes, Benlock, alive. Uh, yes, Wixen, functioning in as many pieces as you can manage. Uh, yes, Invicta, alive and preferably uninjured, and same for you, Shuja. Always preferable. Um, Benlock, yes. is there any particular snack your creature would like? Because you definitely would see Shuja has produced some of it out of a pouch and is like, was any of it alive recently? Was any of it alive recently? Still wiggling, yeah. if I know that's what it's into. Fitch. <laughs> Leaves over there. <laughs> and Victor just looks at Major Ur Rufia and goes, this is punishment, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, she does not, she, uh, like many months again, she has some, uh, you know, unnecessary sort of functions to make biological creatures feel more at ease. So, like, she blinks on occasion, even though she doesn't need to. She does not blink in this moment. She looks directly at you, pushes a button on the table, and a little sort of uh, maintenance bot 
uh, comes up from the floor and cleans up the remains of this mess, and without breaking eye contact says, of course not, not. <laughs> Still is nothing, though. I don't believe you, but we can discuss that when we get back. Uh, I look forward to that. And she immediately looks away. Um, yeah, so uh, that is your mission. She, of course, hesitantly asks if there are questions. <laughs> How long do we have to complete this mission? We don't have a particular deadline for you, aside from the possibility that some of the previous team are still alive. And we have no way to know how long that will continue. We lost contact with them just over seven days ago. Mm, I assume if we go missing, that does not mean in seven days a third team will be dispatched. Uh, very similar to the way she just spoke to Invicta, she looks right at you, Shuja, and says, don't go missing, missing. So, so, are we getting them back safely, or just us? Yeah, it, it would benefit us to have a priority on these, on the mission log. Uh, recovered data is obviously the most important. Uh, she says, I am not surprised that that would be your, your top priority, Wixen. It is second on Torch's list. Second? <laughs> that does not. So they want the biologicals returned safely. But there are so many biologicals, and they create more every day. <laughs> you know, you can stay here. It is a lovely room. <laughs> I didn't mean the room. I meant from the mission. Is all this a rescue mission? Yeah. It the creation of new biologicals can be quite enjoyable if you're doing it properly. <laughs> <laughs> This the gross. biologicals, biologicals may have information that even any data recovery could not reproduce. Experience with the Hapalox is what Torch is what Torch is sorely missing right now. Mm. Ah, so they are also considered data. She pauses and finally looks at you and says, if that helps you organize the priorities. Why are we so strange to this woman? Like, do, do you want us to... We, we, we get the people and bring them back, yes. She, she actually does, because it's one of the things that she has programmed, she's programmed to be able to do, she does take a big sigh of this one. She presses another button on the table and the lights sort of shift to a much, I'm gonna say this and you're all gonna just decide that you know what I mean. They shift to sort of a more casual thing, like it was very much like a meeting room in torch. And now it's just like, there's some lamps on. And she goes, okay, look. <laughs> <laughs> Are we getting casual or VR? Natural cocktails. <laughs> uh, okay. We have to, we must learn more about the Hapalox, one way or another, one way or another. They are a distinct and immediate threat to Vitoan safety, as long as we as long as we don't know anything about them. Both data and biologicals may have information. And at this point, anything, anything, anything is useful. I just wanted to know if we would get in trouble if they died by happenstance. <laughs> or if the data has to be recovered in a mm, forceful way. Wow, you made that so less like clever. Good for you. <laughs> I have been practicing my etiquette. It's not working. <laughs> I assume it is a stealth mission first, but we are clear to engage if necessary. Approach to the gun and throughout whatever you find there, I would recommend, we would recommend, is stealthy. Mm. At this time, we do not know the motivations of the Hapalox, of the Hapalox, any more than we know about their anatomy or their modes of communication. communication. If they are in fact not immediately hostile to the surface dwellers of the Toa, we would not want to cause an incident. However, if you find that they are hostile to your mission, do what you must. Mm, good, and he just stands up. <laughs> I, have, I have one more question. Uh, did you not have a tracker on the previous course? She, thank you, she, uh, she says we did, and 
it continued transmitting until the same moment that communications were lost. Mm -hmm. They did. Okay. Stand up. <laughs> so we are going to be well armed, have medical supplies for any survivors, and means to collect this data. Is is that what we will have? Uh, she nods and says, "Yes, most of that, most of that will be provided to you by Yachtur at the time, and also you will have us." Uh, huh. Well, uh, yes. this will be quite fun. So Gabe, Gabe actually realized we didn't introduce our professions at all. Uh, no, I was going to do that as we headed to Mandir. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Immersive revelation. That's right. That's right. Um, so if there's nothing else for Rafia, then the four of you can take. You know, some time. Uh, you, there's a transport set up for you to head to, to the Kasuli facility in Mandira. Um, but you have some time to gather what you need, uh, do whatever it is you need to do before you go. So let's take a little moment uh, with each of you to let us know how you are preparing for the mission. And through that, you can reveal your profession for us. Uh, let's start with you. Um, Invicta is, you know, currently dressed in her torch uniform. So she kind of looks around and, and makes note of, of everyone, and she looks to you, Shuja. You're my kind of warrior. I should certainly hope so, yes. And she's just like, hmm, there's time on the ship, maybe. Um, I'm so... <laughs> I didn't. I'm surprised you made it 33 minutes. I am too, honestly. <laughs> I'm acting shy. We need to get out of the briefing. Yeah. Um, so, I'm going to bring a little bit of recreational herbalism, shall we say, and, mm. and fine drink. Open the third eye. It's coming with the ancestors. Oh, yes, uh, my ancestors are right down the road. <laughs> <laughs> but also... Our, our high and old friend there was interested in my latest batch of experiments, so mm. if you'd like me to bring a little lecture for you, but I, I think we're going to get along. Absolutely. I would not miss this opportunity to um, associate with a woman of yours. Legendary. Oh, I don't know about legendary, but we can work on that. Mm. Um, so just so you know, Invicta is a blade keeper. Obviously, based on that. <laughs> <laughs> what else could you possibly take? <laughs> I don't know, I could have been a spine ripper. I could have been a uh, their point. I could have been a pugilist. I could have been a bat breaker. Uh, but no, so Invicta is a blade keeper, and a, and a blade keeper is basically, you know, kind of a samurai, I guess would be the best way to put well, it. Wait, sure, yeah. um, you know, they're, they have a code. They don't really, like... I'm not out here just cutting people's heads off just cuts, but I am more of a fighter than a scientist as the most of the high and all are. Mm -hmm. So um, she is still very smart. She did go to university or whatever our equivalent of university is. She has several PhDs that she likes to show up when people think she's just a dumb fighter. And um, she's going to go get into something more appropriate for a mission instead of a dress uniform. And uh, of course her blade, which was given to her by her mentor, who taught her how to fight will always be with her, as well as um, a gift of a replica of Ikemba's blade. Oh. Because before they parted ways and he went on a shore leave, as a sign of respect and friendship, he gave her a, a almost perfect copy of one of the daggers that he carries. Love that. Uh, for those of you who haven't had the pleasure of seeing the show, is one of our players from the stream game. Uh, he was a Musalian bio priest. Uh, who wants to tell us how you're preparing in your profession next? I'll go for sure. Do it. Uh, he stands up from the table in the meeting, and he just has basically just like a little duffel, and that's it. That is his preparation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, he is um, conspicuously very, very lightly armored and very lightly armed. He's got a, a knife on his hip, but it is like a more like a... Um, uh, mountaining knife, you know, not like a combat knife, it's like a survival knife, more like a, like a bowie knife. Um, those uh, gauntlets he wears are like dinged up and scratched and beaten, like clearly have been through quite a lot. Um, but otherwise, he travels very light, because uh, he is a spine ripper. Uh, he is the opposite of a blade keeper who fights for honor and as, uh, as an expression of themselves and as an art form. 
he's pure blunt trauma. Pay him and tell him to hurt somebody, and he will. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. <laughs> Who's excuse me next? Uh, so Wixen goes uh, back to her artificial living quarters, and uh, it's it's like a, it's a mixture of different themes that are there. It's it's obvious that she's trying to find something that works for her. She doesn't really understand why people would have paintings of faces. Um, you know, are like paintings of animals. Cool. It's like that's that's outside. Why would that? But she's trying it out, uh, and uh, she equips herself for the journey. Uh, she has a shrine uh, in her corner, and on there is a uh, miniature head, which is uh, her first kill. She removed uh, the skull and then like shrank down the head and preserved it. And it is on a chain, so she takes that and she puts that on. That is her signature item, her signature asset. Um, she is a blade keeper, so and uh, her <laughs> her body has literally been programmed to make uh, stabby weapons and uh, spikes and everything like that. Uh, she, from her shrine, also takes a, a bag of uh, sharpened, uh, how do you say it, shurikens? Uh-huh. Yeah, so she has a, a bag of that, which she then uh, attaches uh, around her waist, like her, uh, her thigh belt kind of a deal. And then she goes into what would be a kitchen area. She uses it for storage. But uh, she does keep, uh, in the chilled corner, she gets a uh, protein stock. Uh, and she's like, this is in case they need to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so prepared. <laughs> Bainlock. Uh, Bainlock uh, moves, stands up and looks to his, to his pet. His pet is Volgo. Uh, and Bainlock is a Salansi. Uh, one of the nice things about Salansi is that they can communicate with each other or plant-like things through a sense of touch, and it's almost like a telepathy kind of moment. And you see him place his head against Vulgo's, and as his head rises up, there's almost a mask and muzzle that appears across his face to mimic that of Vulgo's. And his body starts to change a little bit, um, and it looks almost like uh, a layer of mushroom leather is appearing over his body. So good. Okay, that's good now. Where is uh, this socially weird one? <laughs> Standing outside your door. That's <laughs> <laughs> why. What's with the hive? Are you ready to go? I am ready. Are you prepared? I have food. I don't. That is what you eat. No, I don't. I can photosynthesize. <laughs> <laughs> then I will feed it to one of the others. Oh, that, that is what you do be... for new friends. No, you can just get away. Do you mean like you put it in their mouth? <laughs> if that is what their culture don't, decrees. Don't, don't, what? I can do Actually, that would be more no, efficient no. than them having to feed themselves. No, no, it, it, you... If you continuously expand my mind. No. <laughs> You're wrong. Love it. You all meet, I'm deciding, at the transport. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Invicta, you recognize this transport because the control panel has very obviously been taken apart and enhanced. Uh, this is the transport that you and the rest of your old team took to Mandira the first time, oh. so you know you'll get there very quickly. Oh no. What do you say the old team? We're the new team. <laughs> Don't tell them. <laughs> what did you say? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Sit shut up, you idiot, shut up. <laughs> Look, so, Special force. I mean, maybe, maybe I don't miss all of them. Like, hey, replaced. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Point at that. All right, so you all get into, uh, you, you are able to take this very fast transport, which was modified by a, a team member of, of Invictus to go really faster than any land-based vehicle should. Is that Silo? No, it was Kosa. Uh, uh, oh. uh -huh. Note to self, fix the navigation. <laughs> You do, however, make it to Mandir, and just as before, uh, Invicta, you arrive, and you can see there's a, a little cove area, which is where this transport is going to guide you all, and that's where the Kusili Oceanographic Research Facility is. Uh, it's a big research facility that's headed up by two individuals. One is a Salansi named Asalje, who is a uh, marine, biology, uh, marine botanist, and uh, the other is Yaktur, a Hyanol uh, marine 
What's the other one? Biology. Not biologist, zoologist, thank you. <laughs> it's like in my notes. Um, Just a, a small thing. Please. I feel like while we're traveling, um, yes. Winston and Shuta play a little game where it's like I hold my hands in front of her knives and she shoots one out and I try and get out of the way. So oh. she keep here like mine. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite pastime. <laughs> I'm like, one of these days, I'm going to give you. It's one of these days I will be old and you will not. <laughs> <laughs> I have our first contest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I wasn't going to, and then Wixen was like, no, I want to get you. So I think. So. Did Victor bet money on this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're we back. back. Yeah. Back. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll get you some, some fast growth from the dead bay. <laughs> I love it. All right, so you yes. two are going to put together dice pools. Mm -hmm. uh, one from each, one die from each section. You're going to roll them up, take the two, top two, and add them together. Uh, ugh, which one of you, whose idea was this? I, would, I, I feel like, and you, you tell me, Wits, and I feel like this is something we do a lot. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, this is not our first rodeo. Yeah, this is definitely something that we do uh, for transports. Yeah, sort of okay. like we come into the room and you just get that luck. <laughs> I love it. I can't even give one of you advantage or an advantage in that case because you know each other so I would, well. I would just like to point out that she is a carefully cultivated killing machine. I am but a man. I am but a man. Um, I love it. So uh, we're going to say that you are going to roll first in this contest. And you all, well, we'll, we'll work it out. But you can go back and forth uh, until one of you either fails or decides to give in, uh, and then we'll narrate what happens. So, yes, uh, I'm a pack master. I got distracted because she wants to kill everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what dice are you going to put together? What are you going to roll for us? OK, well, uh, I believe this is this uh, obviously Blade Keeper, but yes. I want this to go under her personality trait description, <laughs> where she's creepily earnest. <laughs> <laughs> so that's definitely Yeah, uh, you know, put him at ease. It's great, OK. Uh, what skill would you like to use? Uh, for skill, I mean, she, uh, she her top skill is no. Okay. And it's usually doing no as in biology, as in she knows um, uh, she knows the Achilles heel of different species because she spent time taking them apart. <laughs> she's like, okay. hey, you know what? She's working on her etiquette. I'm into it. So there's that. Um, so okay. I, I think just no, but not necessarily by a Great, that makes sense. And then which value? Uh, this value, this is, well, uh, I feel like he, Shuja has not been stabbed so far. Uh -huh. So I think, uh, glory is okay. going to go into this one. Yes. All right. Roll, this is roll it up. Roll it up. stabbed is a goal of mine. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that would just be a, a D8, uh, <laughs> uh, a D8 for Creepily Earnest, yep. a D10 for no, a D6 for, uh, a D6 for, D6 I mean, for a D6 for four. Oh, yeah. Roll those up, take the top two. Oh. Eight dice track. Or dice uh, track. The top two, that's an eight and a four. All right, so where does your first weapon Can I come use from? my plot point to, to add no. one? No. <laughs> Can if you want to. I will say if 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 Shuja beats that, you'll have another chance to roll again and beat whatever he gets. Okay. So I'll it's up to you. I'll hold on. It's a okay. friendly contest. It's a friendly contest. <laughs> All right. It's, 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 She's like, what if I kill it? <laughs> I'm like, ugh. Hey, we got to the planning. <laughs> Shuja's in for a short night. <laughs> uh, so what was the jump? Uh, that's 12. And where does the blade come from? Um, well, he's doing his hand, uh -huh. but she's also uh, keeping it fair. Oh, okay. Okay, I love that. All right, so we get the first one out. You got a 12 to beat, put together that pool, and roll it up. I'm just the two dice of fight and power. Makes sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> it makes sense to me. This is, this is what I do. Let's see. Uh, that is Ooh. a total of 17. Woo! So one blade shoots out of Wixen, uh, and as every time, I'm sorry, as every time before, Shoja manages to get his hand out of the way. You want to try again? Yes. All right. <laughs> I just look at her and I'm like, you don't understand. Your eye narrows one eighth of an inch before <laughs> uh, You don't give away the talent. <laughs> it's 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 only gave away the details. It's fine. <laughs> well, now we know who Invicta voted on. Uh, uh, all right, Wixen, you want to keep going? OK, so is it just the same rule? If you want to change it up, that's fine, although that was pretty cool. But if you want to change it up, you can for this I'll, round I'll, of the contest. I'll do it for the same one. I all think, right. I think uh, the thing that's tripping her up is that she's doing glory instead of knowledge for this. <laughs> but I'm going to keep with it. Sure. 
Uh, okay, so the top one is a six and a five. Okay, so it's 11. Oh, it's, a, it's 11. What's the other one? Uh, it's six, five, and five. Six, five, and five, eleven, yeah. and sixteen can't do it. So once again, Shoja has has bested you on the reflex game. I wish that I could show frustration. I think that is what this feels like right now. Funny you should mention that. I just bow very deeply, and I'm like, I appreciate you going easy on me yet again. <laughs> and I just, uh, you I just hold my hand out to me. Like, yes. <laughs> Come on. Fine. <laughs> Uh, do you think that this makes Wixen more angry or insecure that she has lost again? Uh, I, I think because she's very good at killing things, but for some some reason, she just she can't even slash Shuja's hand. Like, and this is mm-hmm. every time. Uh-huh. I, I think uh, this this is gonna. I'm thinking this is gonna make her a little insecure. A little insecure. All right, so you're gonna have a D4 of insecure stress. So the next time you roll, that insecurity is going to affect you a little bit. I realize that I have not said what game system we're using. We're playing Cortex right now. This game today is powered by Cortex. Uh, ah. <laughs> it's a modular game system that you can use to create any all sorts of different rule sets and worlds and things. We've cobbled together some of their uh, mods and rule sets for Into the Motherland, so that's what we're doing here. I, w- I will just say, if uh, if... Shuja tells that, like, Whitson really is bothered by it a little bit. He doesn't say anything, which kind of comes next to him to give me that little shoulder check. Oh. Uh, and then, and then uh, Whitson looks at you and holds up a handful of protein stock. <laughs> <laughs> this, this goes into the big hole in your head. Why? <laughs> stuff to actually, uh, maybe later. Does she not spend any time around organics? Not We're living. whispering it, but just so you all can hear it. <laughs> not living ones, no. That's a joke. <laughs> Am I the normal one? What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I love it. It's all right, detour on the way to the... No! It's, it's like, that would be like, I see it, I'm like, oh, look, we're here, look, yeah. <laughs> exactly right, exactly. Oh, thank God, we're there. Wow. <laughs> Are we there yet? Are we yes. There? Um, our captain on the flight out here, we landed, he was like, well, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, after this, uh, you know, Bane locks, uh, Bane locks wallet a little lighter. Uh, <laughs> Shuja with no more holes than he started. Wow. Um, <laughs> You arrive. You gotta go. You arrive at uh, at Corf, the Kusili Oceanographic Research Facility, um, and you are immediately greeted by by Yagtor, who you know is not the most sort of effusive person. Uh, so they are waiting out front uh, of the main entrance, where the where the transport sort of comes and, and drops you all. And as you all step out of the out of the transport, Yagtor says, um, "Oi, oi." Kind of nods at you and Victor, uh, yeah. All right. I, I like hold him up. I hold him a bell pouch like. Did you also say oil Yes, I did. Oh yeah. Looks at you. Looks back into Victor and says, "Better." Yeah, he's all right. Yeah. Come on, and uh, leads you all inside. <laughs> they didn't hear me. <laughs> I don't want to know. Um, Yaktor introduces himself to all of you as, as one of the lead uh, uh, marine zoologist researchers here and uh, tells you is somewhat obviously put out by the fact that he has to stop his research to assist you all. Uh, that Torch has, of course, paid for everything, uh, and he has thing- they have things for you all uh, for this mission. They have three things for you. Uh, they have a small uh, submersible research vessel to get you all out there. Uh, they have some sonar readings from the area around uh, to sort of help you get a sense of where it is that you're going to need to go once you're there. Although they show them to you and, and they sort of say, you know, it doesn't, the, the previous, wait, what was the actor's voice called? Uh, okay. Right. Uh, the previous team uh, seemed to think that there was some sort of cavern system below the ocean floor, but we've not seen any evidence of it anywhere on the sonar readings. So do with that what you will. Do you well, have depth charges? Again. Do you have depth charges? Uh, 
we're a research facility, so that's, that's not a no. That's fair, but no. <laughs> Asalje is not here, she might have stolen that. Mm. I don't have anything. Um, and the third thing that they have to offer you are dive suits. Um, they are based on Asalje's really creepy algae breathing stuff, but you don't actually have to inhale water this time. Uh, but these are dive suits that keep you warm, take care of pressure, let you breathe. They do only last for a couple of hours. And the actor is like, I could have made you more, but the other crew took the rest of them. I did make one for your friend, though. They told me that was coming. You said it, it uses algae? It does. I'm a plant man. Yeah, you are. <laughs> At least. But are you a plant breathing, an uh, algae breathing plant man? I wrote this one, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Did, nope. Did I also get an outfit? Uh, I, you... I, I would prefer one, so I don't stick out. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we, we think, you know, we would, we would provide one for the whole team. Uh, and, you know, I made one special no, for him. I'll, I'll wear it. He gestures actually at your companion. Uh, they, have a, they have a suit for him as well. Oh, it looks like a little dog suit. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's weird. It's cute. It is. <laughs> Both of those things are true. Um, and he sort of says, uh, yeah, so uh, coordinates are programmed into the sub. Um, I don't know what else I can do for you. Um, I just hand, I hand him a box. One's a gift for you, the other one hold on to until we get back. Ah, uh, should I open it now? I know. One might want to wait till you're off duty. Ah, uh, oh, ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I told you what I was working on in the hydroponics. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, they sort of squirrel it away in their various lab coat pockets. I'm like, uh, hopefully those uh, leaves were not friends of Baymox. <laughs> what kind of monster do you take on a slumber cousin? Hey, like your aunt. I don't know. So much. Uh, yeah, Yachter's a high note. A few words. Uh, you're welcome to, to chat with him, or you can carry on. Did you talk to the ones over here before us? Uh, before they left, yeah. How did that go? Uh, they were much more talkative than you all, but you're giving them a run for their money, yeah? Well, that, okay. Well, sh- you wrote. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Did they seem competent? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well armed? Uh, well, they were sort of more of a research and infiltration team, was the, the impression I got. They had muscle with them, but just one. How many of them were there? Four. Uh, so we've been given the exact same mission as the people who never returned. Great, perfect. Well, for what it's worth, just looking at the four of you, I'd say you're um, much more capable in the defending yourselves arena. Yes, but it's in the sub. Well, I mean, I assume you'll eventually get out of it. That's why we gave you the dive suits, but I don't know. It's not my business. Is there, have you heard anything in passing, perhaps rumors <laughs> about the Hapalocks? Uh, he says, um, yep. <gasps> Can you? <laughs> sorry, I had like one step towards him and don't say anything. Yeah, I'm sorry. Are so they what? are they only under the water? Uh, I mean, under the water and in space. What? Okay. <laughs> I mean, not by themselves. I'm That's sorry for what comes next. Um, so you are a researcher, yes. I'm a what? Researcher. I uh, mean, yeah. And you care about learning things. Yeah. Um. Do you understand how this subnautic thing works? Uh, vaguely, Ooh, yeah. You're coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Mm. <laughs> but then you get to learn about the Havelock. Yeah. See, I, I generally sort of stick to um, the non... Uh, oh, I never remember which one's which. Non-sentient, right? As opposed to non-sapient, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I like... My, and he points... They point to this beautiful... Uh, like anatomy chart on the wall and it's this giant uh, sea creature that looks sort of like an orca uh, but with a bifurcated tail Uh, and he says ah now these are all my speed so you would know what to avoid if we were down there he says yeah avoid these yeah yeah (laughs) is there perhaps uh, something that we could offer you that would um, make it more palatable to accompany us I have food. I can also offer you. Do you That's have not food. food. My friends, my friends, my friends. This thinking Hyanol is clearly a coward. Let us be on about. Hey, 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 hey! I pointed at that thing. I'm like, also, you hit it right here. Kill it instantly. Uh, I didn't <laughs> know that you were a researcher. Yachter goes through a lot. Knowing him to do research, we will do 
What we do? Just... I do both. <laughs> no, not you. This I know is a coward. No, he's not a coward. I, we we have. Yeah, I, I know he's not a coward. Jeffrey goes. No, it's all right. I, I sort of don't like to fight. I, I, well, I mean, I, I wouldn't use coward, but I, I don't. try to help. You. Oh, I'm sorry. Jeffrey, I was meant to ask you what part. What part of Hale Highlands are you from? We don't sound anything alike. Oh yeah, no, my family left a long time ago. We decided to head to <laughs> north. North. <laughs> <laughs> You know where they all sound like this. You know the place. Yes. Yeah, really north. Yeah, just way up north. Well, we got the really, really good whiskey. That's the ball. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> you think Judy goes and gets in the pod, but gets nowhere near the controls. <laughs> as far as possible, just like sits in the back, just uh, like putting on the dive suit. They do. Yachter does sort of walk you through the sub, um, and there are basically sort of four stations on it. Uh, there's obviously the one that Shuja is not at, uh, the sort of piloted navigation station. There are. It's a research vessel, so there are there are two sort of pincer arms for like gathering samples and things like that. There's one uh, sort of station that is not immediately clear just looking at it at what it is. And what's the other thing? I don't know. Oh, there's two. Uh, there's two that are uh, sort of, you can't really tell what they are, and he explains them all. So the arms are not only for gathering samples, but they do also have some defensive capabilities. Uh, they, again, research vessels, they're not lethal ones, but they do, they can emit little chunks to sort of scare off things that are... No, you stop it. Wait, no. stop it, wait. No. Um, one of the mysterious sections has a similar ability, but it does it to the hull of the sub, uh, and he goes... Uh, Useful that one if you get swallowed. It's only happened once to me, don't worry. I'm, I'm sorry, what? I mean, I'm still here, it's all right. Uh, and then there is, uh, there is some really sort of basic but functional camouflage so that the researchers can sort of approach different subjects without startling them, but that seems to be applicable to y'all's situation. Uh, so I have little, little abilities depending on where you all want to sit. Uh, I'll, I'll be pilot. I love all of you. I don't. <laughs> Pass the I'll, take, I'll take fighty arms. Yeah, fighty arms. <laughs> That's these. Uh, so we got camo and we got the hull zapper. Uh, I'll do the camo. Oh, that shocked me. <laughs> uh, so as you are, those are just little talents. You can spend plot points to do things. Uh, and as you all are going along in this research vessel, they may come in handy. Can't imagine why we need an electroshock if the sub gets grabbed. Awesome. Cool, 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 cool. I mean, I'll probably just zap things just because. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bane, like, you immediately see, by the way, that uh, you, unless something happens, like, the sub will basically be on autopilot to the, the location. Oh. oh, I wouldn't worry. You'll, you'll get to do stuff. I wasn't worried, yeah, but that wasn't until... So here's the concerning thing. Uh-huh. You gave me a thing for piloting. I did. And then said, you probably won't have to do anything. Well. <laughs> <laughs> why do you think I said I want to be able to breathe underwater? This is why. Uh-huh. <laughs> As we're getting ready to leave, I just look at uh, Yaktur and I say, if we do not return in three days, uh, you should request depth charges. Destroy the whole area. He said. <laughs> uh, uh, three days. Three days. All right. Uh, Wait, didn't the last team get a week? They did. Okay, uh, let's go five. <laughs> mm, oh, you're afraid. Five days. I hear five. Do I hear six? No. No, maybe four. Maybe four. And then Brenda's just sitting there like, I should have gone on vacation with everyone. <laughs> Your friends are on vacation? To the beach episode with the rest of the crew. This is space my ties. I'm like, this is a warrior's vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the beach dead. episode? I got a broken leg. That's true. <laughs> and was hobbling around and everyone left me to go kick it on the beach. Only two of them did and they went to go eat. <laughs> and kick it on the beach. Anyway. <laughs> Shall we? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. So off, uh, off you all head. You see, you see these robot arms are just like jab, jab, cross. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, and that's the worst. If I'm pilot, if I'm watching a pilot, it's like, oh my god, why are they doing this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, the latency is too great. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds funny. 
As you all, are, that took a minute, but it's funny. As you all head out, uh, fairly smooth sailing out of the cove, um, actually really beautiful sort of reef areas, and a lot of, you know, Yachtur and Asalje have co- cultivated a lot of wildlife, uh, flora and fauna here in the cove, because they can study it. And you sort of, you're underwater, but you know immediately once you've passed the entrance to the cove, because it just opens up and there's just a bunch of nothing. Um, and the, the sub is sort of heading on its own way, and uh, Bainlock, you're about halfway to the coordinates on the sub, and a little ping uh, begins to pop up on, on the ship's radar. It doesn't change course or anything, but you can see that there is something a few little ways away at this point still, but it is coming in your general direction. What is this radar designed to pick up exactly? Like things of a certain size, things moving at a certain speed. Yeah, this one is, because it's at the piloting station with you, this one is sort of for like large obstacles and large creatures that like you would need to probably navigate around or possibly away from. Uh, it's definitely not for like smaller research creatures yeah. and things. Um, that is something about it's approaching. Activating chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like with me towards it. Oh. Uh, so you know what? Actually, is when when uh, Usin says that, I think we'll actually pause so the engines aren't still making a hum and kind of like try to let it pass over. Oh, I like that. Okay. So you all sort of uh, hold up, uh, begin to sort of hover in the water, uh, and camouflage mode is activated. Well, and is that in camouflage mode the entire time? Okay. <laughs> Don't ask. And shortly thereafter, approaching you is in the flesh one of the creatures that Yachtur so loves, uh, a Duakma. He should have been here. What? He should have been here. <laughs> well, he's a coward, remember? Uh, <laughs> and the Duakma senses that there is something here, but possibly can't find you. So I'm going to roll up something. You start putting together a camouflage based dice pool. Uh, While this is happening, I'm like, please. Uh, Inventor Winston, no, you see right behind that fin just here, you can uh, <laughs> dice. <laughs> Guaranteed, a swim bladder. Uh. <laughs> I mean, you may have a chance <laughs> to demonstrate. <laughs> are, you, are you just gonna. Uh, that, that, that is the plan, clearly, yes. I mean, I, I cannot count for these robot arms, but if I were out there, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> 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 so, uh, the Duakma got an a, a, no, a 14 to try to uh, discover your location. So you're going to want to beat a 14 with the pool that you're putting together, which will include an asset for the camouflage. Exploration. Yep. Camouflage. No, it's C. I believe it's it. OU, which is what looks wrong to my flag. Camouflage. Oh, camouflage. Okay, that was I rolled uh, pretty well. Okay, that one did. Oh, good, because so did I. <laughs> okay, so uh, out of all of these, just the top Pick two. the top two, yep. Uh, well, the top two is uh, so eight. Yep. And a ten. Ooh! Eighteen. Nice. Eighteen, all right. Yeah, and, and the dog is not going to sort of push the question because... It assumes that there's nothing there. So uh, the Duakma sort of circles, a big wide circle of the of the vessel a few times. And Wixen takes mental pictures. Is they're, this, they're high def. Is this thing a predatory creature? Yes. Why didn't Yachtin tell us that? I felt it was implied. <laughs> well, I mean, you all call him a coward. He's probably said, y'all. I didn't here. say coward. I was just trying to pick him up and just put him in the ship. But no, we left. He did say stay away from that. So he, I, he did, and, yeah. and you know, there were big teeth in the diagram. Yeah. You just have to A lot of things have big teeth. Well, it's true. You should stay away from those two. That's probably <laughs> true. That's <laughs> but I have big teeth. No. <laughs> no. Anyway, y'all don't stop flirting in the ship while this creature is around. Oh, now see, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you something since you all managed to avoid the Duakma. It wasn't there to fight, it was there to do the other F thing. Oh. It wanted to. It wanted to. Wait. It might be. You you can't even talk about me then. I'm just being. (laughs) It It wanted to mate with our ship? Well, it did, you know. They're predatory. They're not. It's a curvy vessel. Why is this known to all of you? (laughs) It's vaguely Duakma shaped, this sub. Did I not mention that? I just made it up. That's a sentence I don't like. (laughs) 
it's man, just, it's man, man, the lock and shape. I feel like I would say that in any context, regardless whether it makes sense, it's going to sound bad. Well, I just feel like now it's like Bugs Bunny and drag, but it's like a submarine. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, exactly. It's like, okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, it swims off. <laughs> Manny, you were, that was a joke, right? It wasn't here to... No, it absolutely was there to make with the sub. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, 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 hey. Turn off the chameleon. <laughs> I was going to point out. Science. You had to go, and just so you all know, this is all canon. So now, I have to work on the narrative lore of this thing that wants to, ah, uh, shit. Maybe it's a special <laughs> duo. Yeah, now it's all of our problems. The, Thanks. the fact that it's special makes it worse. <laughs> I think the question to ask is, what is it about the autopiloting that it was calling forth, like wooing? Uh, this creature. Very, very suggestive. So Made it dance-esque. So. You should just sound like, come get some. <laughs> just, you just hit the gas and it's just like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, know, roll like gas. just know that as a creative director, I can veto. It's <laughs> <laughs> on the internet. It's too late. That's right. Uh, that doesn't mean it's going to get in the butt. <laughs> Bye. Love it. I'm not helping with art direction. That'll be the AO3 of my Oh, yep. no. 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 Once the Duachna is gone, uh, you all can continue uh, on your way to um, to the location to this big weapon that Invicta has seen before. Um, but I don't think, Invicta, you've seen it from this particular angle, being sort of right up next to it and all the way down by the ocean floor where it sits when it isn't raised and in use. And immediately obvious is you can see a place where a hatch or a, or a plate or something sort of on the base of this thing has been forcibly opened. Um, and that's what you see. Question. Answer. Well, hopefully it's a good answer. Mm -hmm. So for the suits that we were given, mm -hmm. Once we wear them, are we? Do we have to wear them the whole duration, or do we activate and re uh, wear them, turn them off for like a better way to describe it, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then activate them again, or is it just you started this, you've got to wear it for two hours, and that's it? No, they're sort of um, they're they're like the little lights on life vests, right? They're water activated. When they sense that you are in water, they will power up and do the things they need to do, and then once you're not, they'll. So if we have to get out, get yeah. in this thing, and then we're back in, out of the water. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah, you'll be good. I will be keeping fur, but you'll be fine, I'm sure. Look, I'm, I'm high in a while. I got one getting my fur wet. <laughs> I feel that. I feel <laughs> valid. Um, yeah, so this is very clearly, this is that squid-shaped sort of anti-aircraft enormous gun, and there's a there's a plate ripped up on the bottom, and, and you can sort of see, well, it's underwater. It's right? It is underwater. Did and Victor, um, yes. did this thing come above surface to fire at all of you? Well, part of it broke the surface and shot down our ship from the planet. So it, it can fire from underwater? Yes. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> you hate it? How do you say God feel? I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> it's surprising they did not ask us to simply destroy this monstrosity. Well, oh no, we can destroy it. We just need to see if there's any people left. Hey, 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 what? Should we? Installation of this size it must be full of a number of foes. Nothing else is on the radar. Should then we, we kill them. We will, but this does not strike anybody else as odd that we just rolled right up to this thing. I mean, we. It's been several months. Some of them may have left. Invicta, okay. when you say that, you do remember when you returned from your <laughs> galactic scavenger hunt um, that around the planet of the Toa were a few of the ships from that mysterious planet of Earth. But there were also Hapalock ships. Right. And Major Rafia told you that not long before you all returned, a fairly large number of, of Hapalock ships launched from the oceans around the planet. Uh, so that is possibly at least a partial explanation uh, that you would know about, Invicta, is that if, if a contingent of the Hapalock station here are in those ships that launched, maybe things won't be so bad. I'm sorry, I couldn't get through it. <laughs> eh, this is fine. This is all fine. Um, I, I relay this to the others. 
we may have bigger issues once we leave this place if we don't blow it sky high. But there are a bunch of haplock ships in the atmosphere. And how we've not been drawn into a full out war yet, I don't know. But my guess is they are above us, watching and waiting to see what happens. So I hope that they're not just observing and are going to shoot this thing out of the ocean. Great, I just creeped myself out. Um, but I don't think there's many of them left on this ship. So are you saying that we should utilize this weapon to bring down the Havelock ships? Ooh. We could, but remember, that's not part of our mission. It's well, if, if they start something, we stop it. No. So is there a way to have them start something? This seems very efficient to me. I'm sure we'll get them to start something once we go on board. Our job is to get information. If you all want to die later, great. I need my job done. <laughs> so just a point of reference. Yep. Rough, roughly how far are we from the research station? Oh, uh, between a dozen and 20 miles probably. You're a ways out. The ways out, and the the suit will last for hours. Hours, yeah, two to four, depending on you know how much respiration and that kind of stuff. So what you're saying, if were we to use, and I'm just spitballing, mm -hmm. were we to use this shuttle expressly to somehow use it to try and destroy this thing, we probably would not survive in the ocean before help arrived. Theoretically. Uh, certainly not under the ocean. If you could survive the hypothermia after the suit gave out, maybe, but uh, that's a that's a real chance. I mean, honestly, the only one of us that might survive would be our. Well, that's true. We're gonna be fine. <laughs> well, the salt, if the water's salty and we're out here long enough. Well, I would endeavor to carry back your bodies to those that you call family. Mm. Do not worry. We're going to work on you. I thought that. Yes. I thought that my other crewmate was bad with people. You, you are far, far worse. She doesn't ever seem super aware of it. <laughs> I know. I, I am discovering nuance. No, you're not. <laughs> no. no, you failed that. Please go back and find a new program for nuance. I can suggest several, several <laughs> options for you. I will take those suggestions to my heart. You don't have one? Okay. It is a, it is a, uh, it is a term of speech. I'm going to put on my suit. I think, yeah, I got my, my suit on my suit. You see, he's over there fidgeting right. with Oh, no. The, with I was with talking the, and getting ready. I did multitasking. Like, while y'all are suiting, right. he's yeah. just like, mm. like oh, no, I was talking and multitasking. I'm used to this foolishness. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, I will. I will say we would try and disembark, like try and park the ship somewhere out of the way. Like if there's a yeah. cove, rocks, you know. What yeah, I mean? like, totally. Yeah, and there, there are. It would just be like, oh, what's up? Here's our pod. Here's the pod. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There are trenches, Knock, reefs, and things right. like that around. <laughs> I mean, we yeah. could just rip it open with it. True. Mm. Uh oh. Yes. Yeah. Is, how does the the cloaking can only be activated from inside the ship, right? Uh, yeah. But you could activate it and leave it on. Won't that run down the battery? <laughs> that, that's Look, no, that's this is, this is the future. I mean, <laughs> ultra energizers that will last just for Just days. leave the headlights on when we leave <laughs> the engine will start. <laughs> is it possible that we could uh, link like a sensor to the sh of the ship to Wixen? Probably. I believe I could do that. Uh, just so that if it's cloaked, we know where it is again? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Also, are you saying so we don't forget we'll lose part? it? Yes, <laughs> we will. <laughs> you will. I, I have right. an innate sense of direction that's that bind it. I, I, I will link up to our, our sub since apparently you. that is that is what the party wants as opposed to me carrying back your bodies. To the body. I, just, I, I don't understand why you would want to keep your bodies here underneath the sea. That's only if we die. I, don't know how many times I have to apologize to you for the shuttle on the last mission. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, what? It, you know, it doesn't matter. We lived. He's just still mad at me. I <laughs> lived, but... Look, that ship had a massage bed. <laughs> I will buy you a massage bed. It's the principle. <laughs> it had a sun lamp. <laughs> it was a lovely vessel. The explosion was magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> 
That the explosion was magnificent. <laughs> the part? Yes. All right. Um, so it's Victor, connect to the pond, too. Great. Yeah. Um, and Victor looks like she's in an action film. She's got her blade. Yes. She's got the dagger. She's got a gun on the other hip. Yes. I will say, Shuja turns and looks at you in, like, the... The gauntlets are now on the outside of the swimming suit. <laughs> awesome. And I was like, would you honor me with a display of your weapon? I would like to see it before it is bathed in blood. Ooh. And she, you know, pulls it gently from the scabbard, <laughs> she pulls it out. You see, he looks at it strangely, like he appreciates it, but doesn't know what to do with it. Like the person is never held <laughs> Yeah, <he's sorry. laughs> Lovely. It's, Expert. A, it's a sword. Uh, expert craftsmanship, I'm sure. <laughs> it's you. killed many. I do not doubt. Maybe I don't understand flirting. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning a lot about myself today. <laughs> We're learning so much. Though. Yeah. And, you know, I, I actually offer it. I, I offer it the hilt first. He knows what an honor that is, and he just says, yeah. <laughs> after what I have. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, like, this is how more babies are made. <laughs> what did you do? Right. Now that makes sense. <laughs> yes. did they're just, they're that, just explaining what's happening. Did you happening. get that reference? Which one? I did under I did understand that reference. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I just I will just say right before the helmet goes on Bulgo, I just like flash another like weird spider thing that no one knows where I had it. Yes. I just have it. <laughs> and like his tail whips out and like stabs it and then pulls it into his mouth. And like and then it starts like wagging a little bit. It's kinda cute. It feels like four rows of teeth. It's just like it's at the risk of being meta. If you remember those uh, episodes of Superman where um, Bizarro had that dog that was a monster, yes. but Bizarro didn't realize it was a monster. Like I just wrestle with this thing. Hundred percent. That's very dangerous. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. You're like Comic Con share audience. We're a party yeah. reference. We're a party with a great <laughs> sense of self-preservation. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. Yeah. Absolutely. The brace is a hole. That's fine. It's fine. But right there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you all are suited up and. Connected just so that you don't lose your parking spot. Uh, and uh, then you all can get out of the vessel and head like somewhere. Like, uh, are we getting in the thing? I, I would try and work because we need to swim into the grate. Isn't that the point? Right. I would go in first. Okay. Well, can yeah. don't have a GPS. So, how point. Hold on, there's action going on over here. What's happening? <laughs> She has a GPS location to our ship, and I'm trying to explain organics don't have built-in GPS. That is completely inefficient. I'm How do no you find kidding. each other? And that makes it Victor actually growl. <laughs> <laughs> we have at a remembered conversation, an insult. She actually growls it. Yes, I do remember that. Oh, no. we don't know this is I don't tell us. You know, we can't all be inorganic like you and supposedly superior. I, I mean, supposedly, no. Uh, my form is. I put my hand over here. <laughs> There's like a line that goes around your mouth. <laughs> it's not sexy. Right, <laughs> right before I jump out, I just say, yes, when your reflex enhancements come in, you will be superior species. <laughs> and he's out. <laughs> oh, this is not going to go well for you. At the risk of kicking something else off that I can't begin to predict, who follows Shu? Uh, 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 okay, great. <laughs> All right, so Shujit, then Invicta. Uh, Wixen, Wixen will go then. I guess that will drag uh, Bane Lock with her. Great, great incredible. Um, for dead. For what it's, I, I know we're underwater, but for what it's like, I'm attempting to sneak. You know, I try and turn totally. down the respirator so there's not bubbles. I turn lights off, you know, like I'm attempting. To uh, you know, not just be like, come eat a squid, people. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. Um, as you all pass through this sort of torn up grate or whatever, and you can see it when you get closer, when you get in the water and swim up to it, you can see that like, you know, very obvious sort of uh, uh, markings where it was torn open and consistent with you know torch supplies, and this is clearly where the other crew went in. On the other side of this grate is just a a earthen tunnel but the way you you know that it must lead somewhere because as soon as you sort of enter this little area there is 
the sense of a, of a slight current pulling you that does seem to sort of get stronger as you go further in. It's very, very narrow. I assume we have some sort of comms, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, as I'm in the front, I just try and, I just relate to them on occasion what I see. Great, yeah. And it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of twists and sharp turns and the current continues to pick up the longer you're in there. You get to a point, and Shuji, you'd be the first to sort of see the glow from afar, but there is a very obvious sort of greenish blue glow around, sort of coming from around the next bend, excuse me, in these, in these tunnels. And as you turn the corner, you can see that all of a sudden, almost as if it was sort of cultivated there, the walls of these tunnels are covered with bioluminescent algae of all that, that is that is emitting all sorts of different colors. I think when I notice this, I stop and I just kind of uh, tell everybody over the comms, Baymark, you may want to see this. I'm excited. Yeah, uh, Baymark, you can see the light, and as you make your way forward, uh, which is. <laughs> I'm sure super fun to watch in these very narrow little tunnels you're trying to get from the back to the front. Uh, but you can, I suppose you can all just swim forward. We, we do that thing, that thing, the club thing, where yeah. you're like, so so wait, are we, are we dancing? No, my hands are up here. No, I promise it was me. Yeah, no, I can't. It's right, 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 right. Uh, I touched your butt, I'm not going to look at you. Um, you see these various, uh, yeah, you see these various patches of multicolored bioluminescent algae. Are the are they single colors or is there kind of like almost like a wave or pattern to how they manifest? I wouldn't say pattern because it isn't regular, yeah. but there are definitely waves and shapes and things grown into this. Yeah, is does it look like they're glowing by something like minuscule or minor disturbing them, like the flow of water, or is it just kind of like on its own? Oh, interesting. Um, it is probably the former. It is probably the water, at least in part, because yeah. uh, you can sort of see that the, the lights and the color almost seem to like sweep ahead with the, with the flow of water, with the current, which is not so strong that you can't stop at will yet, but is getting noticeably stronger. I want to touch one. Uh, yeah, they sort of, uh, they light up a little brighter where you touch and then sort of go dark. Uh, it seems like it's affected by the amount of force you put onto it, which is interesting. The brighter glows that you might see ahead, it could signify something is moving. As in the water around us? Potentially, or <coughs> something touching it. Is it time to kill something? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Uh, you okay, still, okay. Yeah, let's you jump off and let's make a kill word. What if something should be killed? What's the word you would like us to say? Kill it. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> Are you carrying on? Is this the... Yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. I'll, I'll uh, go first. Wait, oh, okay. okay. Go first. Uh, what's in is... Uh, well, I guess Shuja is still... Is, is Shuja still, like, right right behind? Is, is there any, like, kelp or anything down here? In these tunnels? No. There was out in the ocean. Could could I retroactively have grabbed some? Sure. I, if the party is willing, I'd like to basically tether us together. If the current is going to get worse and we start getting pulled away, sure. Sure. It's, it's easier right. to split up than to jet. Yeah, of course, he wants to kill. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, totally. And what we'll do is, if that becomes relevant in an actual dice roll, Correct. you can spend a plot point and oh. create an asset that will give dice to for that. I would say yeah. at this point, I would actually like. Flip it around, especially now that he's touched this thing. They go, and I'll bring up the rear now. Sure. So, like, who knows oh, if something's been alerted? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Just in case something uh, looks for us and we're not in the ship. Yeah. yeah. Shooter's gonna serve cake. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah. All right. So we've got the kelp rope. We've got Shooter bringing up the rear. Mm -hmm. um, you all continue forward, and the current, sort of, which was growing steadily, begins to get exponentially stronger of course. and it is i mean you have your comms so you can still talk to each other but even through the suits you can hear the loud sound of water rushing and maybe falling and as it 
begins to get so strong that it starts to pull you all. I need everyone to put together a dice pool to keep yourselves from being swept away or from getting exhausted in this current or whatever, however you want to frame it with your pool. Uh, but the current is dangerous at this point. Oh boy. Let's see how bad it is. It's okay. <laughs> I think I can, I can, I can um, I do that. Not horrible. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, good. What'd you get? Uh, ten, and I rolled a one. Oh. Ooh, Ooh. How exciting. So, in Cortex, when you roll a one on any die that is automatically called a hitch, you cannot include it in your roll total, and I get to do that thing with you. Um, so, the good news is, you get to take a plot point, because I'm going to give you some stress. Thanks. <laughs> and, uh, being like, you try... What were, what, tell me what you put together for that pool. Uh, that was power yep. value, uh, the asset of my wrist blade. Great. Um, that's okay, that actually tells me what I need to know just even those two. So you are trying, you've got the blade out, you're trying to stick it, you know, in, in oh, the wall I... to slow yourself down, whatever it is. And by the time you get to the next thing that I'll tell you about once I've gotten everyone else's goal. So what's, uh, what's the die for the asset, sorry? Uh, D6. Oh, I have to. Uh, you are exhausted, uh, and you now have a D8 of exhausted stress. Uh, she got a four. <laughs> she did. How did I get an eight? Because you rolled bad and you rolled a one. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> but you also get a plot point, so make sure you mark that. Oh, great, okay, thanks. Or, uh, sorry, Quixen, what'd you get? Uh, I was just proud of it. Okay. All righty. Okay, so top ones are eight and a seven. Eight and a seven, all right. So you are able to sort of, it's probably almost that you just sort of go with the flow to some extent, um, and you manage to not completely exhaust yourself trying to uh, evict it. Um, I got a whopping six, and I got a hitch. You got two hitches. But only the top two. So you're going to drown now. Oh, you can't count hitches in your total. Dang it. <laughs> well... Um, so same as with Bainlock, but you being in the middle, you've got, you know, and this rope is going, so you've got folks in front of you pulling, you've got, well, we'll see how this goes, but you've got Shuja behind you, either pulling you back or just running into you. We'll find out in a moment. It's not great. Uh, I'll buy both of them. Uh, so you can take a couple of plot points, but you have a D10 of exhausted stress. Shoot him. I also got a big old one. Oh, in, wow. in, in a total of a big old eight. Holy crap. Just one one? Just a singular one. Okay, so you also take a plot point. You also have a D8 of exhausted stress, and apparently it's, you know, you're just getting battered front and back. Um, it's, <laughs> it's rough. And of course, it ends the only way it possibly can with an ever stronger current. It ends with you all flying out of the end of a tunnel and over a waterfall. And I think that's where we'll take a little five minute break midway through. Five minutes to go to bears. You know this how the murder button by now? Yep, ooh, I didn't mean to start recording there. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back everybody, thanks so much for hanging out and coming back or joining us for the first time, appreciate you. Uh, last we left our crew, they had entered little tunnel, a little tunnel beneath the enormous undersea hapalock weapon and found some bioluminescent algae and then got swept away by the current and over an underground waterfall. Some of them a little the worse for wear, but our months again, it just absolutely Woo! fine. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. The rest of us are like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so you all go tumbling off of this enormous waterfall and into, uh, fortunately for all of you, into a pool below. Um, and you splash down uh, and can make your way to the surface. And when you do, you look around and you find yourselves in very obviously a worked stone room. It looks like some sort of uh, maybe storage facility, uh, or, or some such, there are uh, containers sort of everywhere. That bioluminescent algae is once again sort of all over the walls in here. But the most striking thing about this room is that it's covered in blood. Like, like red blood? Blood. What a good question. What makes the, the grass grow blood, blood, blood? <laughs> what color? Now, 
I'm gonna ask you a question. I don't want you to get upset about it, okay? Mm. Oh, no. What color is Salon Sea Blood? <laughs> That's horrible. Um, <laughs> Green? Well, let's let's go with uh, like a darker blue. Love it. So there's oh, no. Uh, let's let's lean into um, almost like a like a sap amber kind of color. Ooh, that's fun. yeah. Okay. So there's that. I'm failing um, the color wheel. What does red and green combine to make? <laughs> brown. 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 <laughs> amber. Yeah. Um, what? What? <laughs> and like it's recognizable. Uh, I mean it's dried and obviously old, but it hasn't been cleaned up. There is also the red blood of oh, Misa oh, oh, no, that, That's how I went. I just want to oh, yeah, sure no, it's not all. It's not all amber salon sea blood. Um, but there is sort of a lot of it splattered, spattered. No L in that word, I guess. Um, along the walls? In some places, pooled on the ground. It looks like, okay, I made it dramatic, but it looks like there was a fight here. What's the water? Uh, can Wixen take like a, a sample of the different bloods? Because she knows biology to know oh, oh, what, are, okay. what were going, the different species. That's going way different place. <laughs> like, I just want to take a sample for me. <laughs> yeah, right. Just like, like <laughs> <laughs> it. We get a scaring knife. Oh, she just licks it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe he did it first. Making blue burst. In <laughs> um, you can do that. I don't need to roll for it. You know, you absolutely have that programming with what we've talked about for, for Wixen. Um, and you find uh, blood of a Salansi, a Musalian, and as near as you can tell, with a quick analysis, two different... Mm. Mm -hmm. And a Misajai. <laughs> okay, I relay that to everybody else. Yeah. Is, that, is that three? That's three. Is there any sign there, of the it, blood of their enemies of the Havilok? <laughs> you wish. <laughs> oh boy. We didn't get a confirmation of what cultures the ones before us were, did we? Uh, the, you, Riffy has sent a, a sort of mission dossier with you, and you would know, that's fine, that there was a Salansi of Musalian and two Misajai. There is a margin of error, just so that you know. Uh, if they are close relatives, then I would not really be able to differentiate oh. during this quick analysis. In case the team's brother's siblings came here and died instead. <laughs> I have tried that program. Yeah. Yes. Are you trying to say all organics are related? Well, I mean, if we want to have this conversation, yes. <laughs> 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 rocks fall. Yes. <laughs> She's not entirely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so in this room that yep. we, we found our way out, we found our way into this room, is yep. there an obvious another path out of here, yeah. like where bodies might have been dragged. Yeah, so if you take a moment and sort of look around, uh, you see that there is another, uh, there's a sort of door on one wall, and and very obviously there is a uh, drip trail of blood going through, the door is closed at the moment, but going up to the door and uh, presumably beyond it. Using the blood splatter, like, like in the way like detectives do, can I do a roll where Wixen could uh, see like, oh, this person was stabbed here. It was an arterial spray oh. that happened. Uh, the <laughs> intruder CS was CSI uh, Motherland. <laughs> 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 oh, oh no. Uh, yeah, I think so. Go ahead and put that together. And while you're putting that pool together, I'll see if anybody else has. Yeah, uh, I'm going to shift uh, Bulgo into tracker mode. Okay, love that. So what does that look like when Volgo does that? Um, Volgo's mouth kind of like splits into three different pieces uh, and then it reshifts. There's a longer snout and there's actually no mouth at this point that seems visible. Um, and there's actually a small bloom that like blooms on like the back of their head and they're gonna go and sniff the wall. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can put that pool together as well. Anything on this side of the table? Um, of the instruments and things that uh, Rafia gave us, would there be anything where we could just scan the room in general? I think that's uh, four blinds, I should say, before I say yes. What? Four blinds. Um, for anything that's still alive now that we've seen the oh. fighting, or is it just very clear, we're in a room, there's been a fight, and if there is anyone alive, they're just not here. I, I think that is the case because the, the blood is dried, right? And you know it was seven days that they lost contact. They probably got here a little before that. So it's been a while since this fight. Uh, nobody's been in to clean it up, apparently. But yeah. All right, then I'm pulling my blade out and I'm waiting. You are ready. 
Uh, let me pop back real quick to Wix and how'd you do? Well, uh, well, I got an 11. Great. Shuja, you got some? E, this room was a kill box once, so uh -huh. I'm very much like paying attention to that. Why they're uh -huh. like, let's do uh -huh. science. I'm like, let's do violence. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> hey, look, I'm there with you. Exactly. I'm like, yeah. There. yeah, absolutely. Uh, great, that'll be good in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get? I got an 11. Okay, great. Um, uh, Mainlock, what did you and uh, Volgo get? 15. Great. Um, Wixen, you find, uh, you basically can figure out where things went down. Uh, you also find a few places where whatever weapons were used obviously missed. There are burn marks sort of on places on the walls and on the floor. Um, and uh, yeah, you can pinpoint how many of them. Yeah, you can pinpoint where each of them died. Was there anything in particular else that you wanted to know? Uh, probably more about who they were fighting and they lost to oh. spectacularly. Sure. Um, so obviously, they must have, whoever they were fighting, they must have used some sort of energy weapons because there are burn marks on the ceilings and the walls, but. That wouldn't account for all the blood with your role, like that would have cauterized the wounds, right? So they wouldn't have bled like this. So something else must have been in play when they were fighting here. Um, if Wixen, no, nobody knows anything about the Havelock, so I think that's uh, that's probably about it. If Wixen can account for which of them died, yeah. can they also confirm that all four of them died? Ye Wixen is not able to find any evidence of the fourth crew member. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, Volgo gets some sense. And two of the scents uh, are the blood that leads out into the, uh, the red blood that leads out the door into wherever. Yeah. But Volgo latches on to the Salonsi amber blood mm -hmm. and begins sort of going in circles and ends up next to one of the storage containers and begins to sort of plaintively whine. Oh no, okay. Oh, no. Uh, head over there. Um, Invicta, would you do me a favor? By favor, you mean make sure there's no one dead in this? Oh no, I just I just didn't want to open it. <laughs> I'll, I'll put up a handle no. and I'm hey, yes, he has me. like, mm. But I feel like you would so enjoy killing what's inside. Oh, well. So would you. Oh, well, okay. I, On the count of three, we both. Wow. All right, let's do it. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? They sting something in the moment it opens. Yeah. As you open it, I can only imagine that the body of this salon seat falls both on your blade and your fists in a way that really doesn't do any favors. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's dead now. Yeah. It's real messed up. That's dead. It, yeah. So you could open the door yourself. Well, I didn't know if it was going to be stuck. Right, no, we have a system. There's a way we do this. <laughs> it's an order of operations. This Salonsi is very obviously dressed in a torch uniform, a dive suit, very similar to all of yours, uh, and is V dead. Dead before we open the door? Yeah, dead, yeah, dead, dead before. <laughs> dead before. <laughs> Say, outside of the fact that apparently all of his ribs are now broken and he's been stabbed through the heart, right. are there any other... <laughs> Is that all? Is that Jeez. All? Right, first we boil him, <laughs> hang him, and then we'll skin him, and then we'll kill him. Right. Um, are, are there any other signs of what actually killed him? Uh, yeah. You can all sort of look at Wix and you can match up some of the stuff that you found around. Um, and there is uh, a very clear sort of uh, energy burn sort of thing right in the center of his chest. Um, but there are also puncture wounds sort of all over. Would I recognize them because of the fight we had with the half block? Yes, I think that you would. They're in sort of these long lines. Like the, the tentacle. Exactly yeah. right. Just just as an aside, I created the half lock. They're my babies. I love them so much. They're horrifying. <laughs> they are. This is this also, I did this at the top, but we had new friends. In this half of the show, content warning, there will definitely be some body horror. Um, Ooh, Invictus is like swearing maybe. in in high knoll as she sees this and recognizes it because yeah. she remembers yeah. the fight and and how hard it was to defeat even one of them. 
Um, and just quick aside for those that have not seen the stream, we had an encounter with a haplock, and it ripped the cyber hair out of one of our characters played by Christina Ariel and almost killed her. So these things are not like just, oh, look, a squid, Cthulhu. No, no, no. <laughs> these are like from the worst imagination. It came from B Day. What do you expect? So I just start cussing yep. and like pacing. Yep. And I'm doing this in, in the Hyenal language, so I, unless someone else speaks Hyenal, I mean, you just see Invicta just walking around cussing. That'd be a good sign. Are there I, other... I believe she is hangry. <laughs> oh, God, don't feed her. Are, are there any other storage units if this body was in this one? Yeah, there's a bunch in here. This looks like some sort of like uh, like containment area, whatever. Yeah. Would just say one by one, just open them and just make sure, because I'm sure something you know, face huggery is coming out of one of these things, but at least, like, check. Like, I mean, one, are there the bodies of the other team members? Uh -huh. Two, are there bodies of other sentients? Uh-huh. You know? So as you open them, the first couple that you open are completely empty. Uh, the third one that you open is full of uh, loose, that uh, bioluminescent algae, but, yeah. like, cultivated, and it just like, tumbles all over you. Um, there are several others that are full like that. Um, and you sort of get to the last, the last one is more of a sort of barrel sitting on the ground with the lid. And you get to that one, and I'm sure there's all kinds of preparation to open the lid. <laughs> and when you do, nothing happens. I kind of, I put my head over the big <laughs> Oh, well, in that case. I played too much Diablo. I know that when you randomly click on a barrel, something bad is going to happen. That's right. All mm -hmm. oh, right. I, I do have to wonder about a murderous assailant who then takes the time to hide the bodies, unless, unless of course, this being was not completely dead and crawled into the storage shed to perhaps die in peace. I don't know that no. had anything to do with it. That was hiding and hoping for the best, and they died in there. I'm just going to... Uh, lay them down, cross their arms, and kind of like make sure the eyes are closed mm -hmm. and just lay this person to rest and then probably push them into the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and they uh, float for a moment and then as their flesh fibers mm -hmm. uh, sort of soak up some of that water, yeah. they slowly sink out of you. There's still one person that's missing. Three, three more. What? There, there's three. There were four, and that was one. One. That so actually, there's there's four more. There's the four, and then whom killed them? That's well, assuming that that was one. In I know you're smart enough to know semantics, but we're just gonna <laughs> pass on that one. And and Invicta stops and just holds up his hand. I can tell you what killed them. The haplot. I've seen those ones before. Should we take this as a, they started it first? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Weapons <Put> on. All <laughs> Congratulations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kill it. Kill it. Oh, we should kill it. Oh, I was <laughs> going to kill the half a lot. <laughs> no, 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 no. That can was, you, that was can you tell us of their fighting capabilities? Mm. Since you have seen one in action, so that we are better prepared when we eventually kill it. Oh, I get the killing blow. Mm, I deeply suspect there will yeah. be more than one. Plenty for all of us. That's, that's debatable. I'm not going to wait. They have tentacles, and on those tentacles there are suckers so they can grab. And I think from those suckers they have very sharp, pointy barbs. So it can grab you and and perforate you. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a word to use. Thanks, oh. Aiden. Yes. Congratulations, Dad. You know how I feel. Yes. <laughs> Every Thursday. Perforate yeah. that person. Would you prefer air raids? Even better. That's oh. not weird. Oh. Air raids, perforate, smash, <laughs> liquefy. They really sort of jumped the shark there at the end. I'm sorry. I forgot to like tell it. you. I have a walking dictionary. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, do uh, so. The first question I want to ask: Do we want to go to them or make them come to us? 
This room's too small to fight in. We go to them. They must assume we're here already. Plus, they already know this territory. It served them well already. They'll come into battle with a certain mindset that they've done it before, they'll be able to do it again. We should do a new area. When she mentions suckers, I very much look at the ceiling and make sure nothing's on the ceiling. Damn, that would have been so good. It is that right. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta change the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Always stuff on the ceiling. Yeah. We just feel the truth on your face. Mm -hmm, the one, yeah. Oh, you all are like, <gasps> what? What? What are you yeah. talking about? Gross. Good thing we won. <laughs> <laughs> not this room, no. Nothing on the ceiling in here. Then I, it's here. in here. Yeah. Keep moving then. Yep. Yeah. Let's go. As you approach this. If anyone yeah. requires, I, I do have sustenance. It that is, is well not sustenance. Yes. Throw that thing in the water. <laughs> it is, it is very good. good. I followed I followed. You have no recipes. taste buds. <laughs> I take you. Uh, what is it? Wixen, like, this is the protein. It's protein paste. paste. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's like she made it, especially Aww. like she followed the out of what? and everything with it. I feel it's out like vegan. It's, it's, it's like vegan gluten free cookie dough I, with no sugar. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Like I, no, no, no. Right? It actually tastes amazing. Oh, is that the surprise? That's is the that it's actually really good? Lots of ways. She can never taste it. Lots this is one of the things that she's Great. made for Aww. her. So then I absolutely, I'm not going to say that sentence. No. He. Eats it. Uh -huh. uh, I know what you're gonna say. Shut up. <laughs> eats it. Okay. And oh, this is terrible. Give me more. <laughs> it is for people. Yes, I'm people. Sure, whatever. <laughs> These are people. Yes, yeah, sort of. As in, it is for more than one. No, it's not. Oh. No. Or people as opposed to person, not people as opposed to seeing a chair. <laughs> seeing that this really means a lot to her, yeah. and we might be dead in the next five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot you very much is like, I should probably carve up fine. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's incredible. It's yeah. terrible. Shut up. It's terrible. Don't eat it. It's oh, and Victor refuses. <laughs> she has bad memories of, of, of another monster again trying to feed her. Who cannot cook. It's, I, I, I no. look at it and I just say, perhaps I've suffered some head trauma. <laughs> you did. It's terrible. Don't eat it. I, I cross referenced many different recipes until I made a program that the best possible out of all of them don't tell is me, what don't, this don't tell me protein what it's stock is. Yeah, no, you don't know what it's like. I don't know. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of just like, I, I don't say it's good because I know um, uh -huh. they was trying to get me not to, but you just get, you, you get the rubber red for not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they walk in. And Victor's tired of all of this, and she just starts walking where the boots are. She's like, we got, we got things to kill. Y'all can sit here and have a picnic if you want. Hey, hey, you're the only one with a vendetta. We're just here for a good time. It's oh, time to get paid. Because I, I have no check. All right, so you all approach the door, and it soundlessly slides open as you approach it. And beyond, you see a hallway. Uh, again, obviously worked stone. Doors on either side throughout this, oh, I don't know, maybe 100 foot hallway or so, 100 foot feet. Um, and the walls are, again, although this time in more noticeable patterns, covered with that algae. Um, and most of it is dark. There are a few places when the doors open right near the doors where it lights up a little bit. Uh, but you can see the dark algae sort of all the way down the corridor. At any point, were we told about the Havelock using the, the we, we were told about the chromatophores, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I pull the light out, uh -huh. and I, like, click it at the algae, and I see if it reacts to being illuminated. If you illuminate it, does it react? It does, yeah. So you get, it's one way that you can sort of see some of the patterns that are here. Touch, obviously, is a thing, but it seems that light or uh, heat energy or whatever it is is also activating the algae, yeah. Touch it, it, the spotlight activate me as well. <laughs> How does it smell? <laughs> How does it smell? Um, kind of. It's not a weird question. No, but the answer is gonna sound terrible because it smells wet and salty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can look me in the eyes. That's fine. Um, okay. And it's like naturally wet and salty. Yeah. 
Okay. You invited us. You this is, you brought this upon us. Right. You had this upon us. Is there the sound of dripping water at all? No. That's worse. Blood dro- droplets. Droplets on the floor. Yes. Uh, you see little tiny specks of blood go up a little ways and to the second set, no, the third set of doors down this hallway, which is sort of at the end of the hallway. There's basically left and right three sets of doors. The blood goes all the way to the end and turns, oh, actually turns left and right. We'll just say out loud, I believe these are a form of surveillance. Their communication that I believe is giving away our position even as we speak. These creatures use light and color to communicate. These are bright. The moths? The Havelock. They use these things. Who has fire? Ooh. Brown bolt. (laughs) I don't actually have any fire. Oh, I don't have fire. Travel there. Well, I mean, realistically, I guess I'd have the equivalent of a flint and steel type. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I travel light, but I'm, I'm a thinking man's barbarian. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I will, uh, I will I'll see if I if I ignite a little piece when she says who has fire. Wait a minute. <laughs> this is a research facility. They must have a workroom of some kind and would perhaps have torches that could work above and yeah. underwater. But we're not in that room right now. I mean, in this moment. I do produce my torch if yeah. you like. A, 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 if you say, "Wait a minute," I don't burn it. Otherwise, I'm oh no, burn it! Yeah, burn, burn it on. Burn it. As you as you go to burn it, it lights up like a beacon. Um, and well, at least at first, uh, it is. You can tell that it's so wet that it does begin to sort of contract, but it doesn't burn. Uh, you could hold it there for longer if you wanted to. But right now, it's just a very bright light and a slightly shriveled energy. Mm, we may have just set off the fire a little. <laughs> Let them come. You said no in the room, but you want them to come in a hallway. Yes, they must come. We can the leave them here fire. and then ambush them from the other room. I, we are dead. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you showed up. You thought it was going to be easy payday. I didn't say that. I just said people were expendable. But now you're making me expendable, and I hate it. Well, don't you know how to fight? Yes. What in, what you waiting on? I don't want to, it's work. <laughs> <laughs> you joined the wrong team. Yeah, no, you joined the wrong team. Right? <laughs> I don't like this team. Yeah, I you joined team. the wrong team. I've been here. You have a revenge against the squid people. Well, we are merely trying to be efficient killers. Yeah. Mm. I am an efficient and honorable killer. I didn't see you. Separation. <laughs> no, I'm talking to this one that carries shrunken heads. What? This is my first kill. Uh, okay. His name was Gorog. Oh. He was quite a fighter. He was very small. I'm a walk. I this removed the skull and then miniaturized <laughs> and dehydrated the head. There's a lot of it. This is my. <laughs> <laughs> this is my most precious asset. Did you feed me people? <laughs> I did. That's why it tastes I did. Not That's what I was going yeah, to say. Yeah, exactly. The secret ingredient is people. <laughs> <laughs> it is, I do. Is I is, move towards the blood. Is there? Make them swirl the green. Go on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was going to ask, was anything approaching now that we basically set off the alarm? It, it wasn't. It's not. No. Mm. I want to so look at the first uh, group of doors. Yep. Because the, the blood group is in the third group. It's in the so, third set. Yeah, all the way down. I'm going to look the at the, the first group, uh, maybe to the right. Yeah, uh, you head to the right, the door opens immediately, and inside, it's just a room with a uh, that looks like the floor doesn't exist, and it's all water. It's just a pool uh, of, of salty water. I, I would assume that this room, then, uh, you can go to deeper depths uh, underneath perhaps that cavern system that was uh, previously talked about. I mean, I can, I can look if we just, want. We just like to give a listen. I mean, I realize we're under the water, but I mean, is there a hum of machinery, oh. um, screams of people being experimented on? <laughs> <laughs> Suggesting, of course, that the experiment's kept alive long enough to scream. It's true. No. <laughs> uh, no, it is, It is. well, in this room, there is a little bit of, you know, drip and lap and splash. It looks like there's a little bit of movement to the water in here. But no, it's very, very quiet in this tunnel system. Might we say 
too much. I hate all of you. Remains to be seen. But it wouldn't be a game with me, Dave Walters, if it wasn't. <laughs> are we trying? Are we keeping calm and quiet? Or are we just charging in? We should do that. Establish now. Stealth as long as possible. I was going to very quietly go forward. Yeah. I would like to approach the door where the blood was. Yeah. Still moving. Uh, so there was, so the third set of doors, all the way at the end of the hall, there's a big set of double doors at the end of the hall ahead, and then the blood splits off actually left and right. There are two, there's a door on either side at the end, and it looks like maybe there were two people or they went back and forth, but there's blood going to both doors. I look over at Baymok, and then actually I look down at Volko, <laughs> which point Volko wants yeah. to go. Um... I mean, do you give Volgo any particular instructions about which of the scents he has to follow? Uh, the one that, we, that, like, that we couldn't really track, because there were four people. Uh, we know the Salansi is dead. Was there two Montagana, you said? No, there was a Musalian and a Misajai. Salansi, Musalian, Misajai. Oh, in the party? The, the, the old one, yes. The old party, yes. So it's a Salansi, Musalian, and two. Sajai. And the blood that you found was from a Salanti Musalian and a one Sajai. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, I, I want to see if you can find a scent that wasn't in the blood, because that would be an unknown scent, which would be the missing Sajai. I would also like the record to show I'm a Sajai and seem wholly unaffected by all of this. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Love that. Like, you took the time to bury the Salanti, and I'm like, word? <laughs> <laughs> have no soul. <laughs> it's just an empty shell. The occupant. That was a weird history. It sure was. Let's pretend it happened. <laughs> Roll a dice pool for me uh, for Volgo to see if Volgo can find uh, the scent. Do you have any stress right now? Yeah. What is this? Uh, exhausted. What? Die? D8. Great. I'm going to add that to my pool. Thanks. You're welcome. No. I mean, you don't have to. Though. I mean, I don't. But I'm going to say 14. 14. Get two and a half. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so, oh, I rolled a one. Uh, you can, if you would like, spend a plot point to step down that exhaustive stress to a d6. Yeah. I rolled a one this time. I'm tired of being exhausted. Yeah. New year. <laughs> um, tired of being tired. Yeah. So, Volgo suddenly. You can communicate with Volgo, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I made him a plant person. Volgo <laughs> smells. A fish, and then you sort of examine it more, and Volgo is now sort of communicates to you that he realizes that what he thought was just sort of the smell of the ocean, which was a new smell to him, I think, yeah, when the salty, uh, is in fact <laughs> is in fact creatures. Oh, uh, creatures. Oh yeah, huh. yeah, and Are they there is the scent of them all over the place, but in particular. Heading, most recently, heading left, right, and straight ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll pass that on. Um, let's just die. Screw it. Let's just... What was your turn? 14? Yes. There is also a relatively fresh scent going back to... Where's my man? The second door on the left. That one. Let's go to that one literally goes to it and like kind of stands to the side and puts a hand on it like looks make sure everybody's ready and yank it open oh yeah another big pool seems empty i go <laughs> into the water i look whatever i'm good you see go into the water yeah cool oh. i mean i was like i see him going towards it and i act like i'm about to stop him and then i just go like <laughs> behind I mean, him. yeah i can write another one yeah character Okay, they were going in the water. Okay. All right. Y'all are going in the water. I, oh, uh, I, think, the water. I need to figure out more about what happens when they die. So let's do this. Uh huh. Um, quick question: Is there any blood in the second room? No. Another big <laughs> got it. Mm. One of these. <laughs> one. Very much just like imagine. I'm like, don't worry, it's going to be fine. <laughs> 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 You grabbed a lot what of dice. I have a shoe job. I grabbed five. That's a lot of dice. Mm-hmm. Only the top two count. It's fine. It's right. I did roll another one. So you can, do you have any more plot points? Yeah. Because spend that to step that down to a d4. That's oh, right. Great. Um, my total is just a nine. And this is a contest. So it's time for you to roll up a thing as you 
Did that go all the way out there? Amazing. <laughs> For the record, I do I do go with him though. But okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. We gonna die. We gonna die together, baby. Let's go. Is everyone going in the pool? Yeah. I, 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 you're not. I feel like the very important high and is not the rest of us. You know what? If we all die and you don't, I hope that you like want vengeance for us. Maybe. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> hey, hey, bang into the end. That's Let's right. Hey. All right. So all of you <laughs> feel something reach out from under the water and try and grab you all. So put together dice pulls to avoid that. Uh, and I will. It's contests, which means that this thing that is trying to grab you is instigating. So I will roll first to set your difficulties. Um, uh, since I do have a, a I guess, equivalent of a laser pistol. Or, or whatever we're calling it. Uh-huh. Would I roll to see if I can hit whatever grabs them? In a moment, but you can go ahead and put the pool together if you want. Yeah. Uh, Wix, do you have any stress? Um, I, I previously got in super, but you still have this here. Great, yeah. okay. I didn't so, change it before. Yours is <laughs> when, I, when it's the uh, cultural uh, what, what's the die size a d8 or if you feel like any of your uh, your distinctions your culture your profession or your personality statement would hinder you you can take a plot point and make it a d4 instead so we discussed my talent which yes. is basically closing in on things correct I would like to do that I think that's great uh, it's we, time to go let's do it yeah hell yeah um, oh what do you have stress I keep rolling this in, not I have uh, exhaustion I have a d8 of exhaustion right okay and what did you say the number was that we were beating? Uh, the yours I have not rolled up yet. Okay, <laughs> um, yours is a 15. Well, I only got a 12. Okay. And I'm using my ability to get in on them. Yes. Uh, we, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Roll those one, I'll come back. Mm-hmm. Um, Bane lock, what'd you get? 15. Okay, so you managed to avoid this thing. It is, however, going to try and grab you again. This contest, we go back and forth until one of you wants to give in. And it does not want to give in. However... You no longer have that stress. How is for you? It does not beat you. Uh, Wixen, what'd you get? I got an 11 again. Okay, I got a 12 for yours. So I'm going to do a plot point. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yes, you could absolutely do that. Uh, you, as long as you roll more than one. Uh, neither of you rolled ones, right? Great. No, I didn't. Great. No All ones. right. Um, so you both met. Oh, it's going to against you again. What'd you say you got? I got an 11. Okay, it, now it's going again and trying to grab you again. You managed to pull your leg out, but there's another something that grabs at you, and this time it's a 16 to beat. Ooh. So you can either take some stress as it grabs you and give in and get a plot point, or you can press your luck and try and roll higher than a 16. <laughs> well, the way that I've been rolling lately. You're not wrong. Um, I think I'm gonna do a plot point and... Uh, Take a plot point and take the stress. Great. Yeah. Uh, so take a D8 of injured stress. You, sir, what'd you roll? Uh, 12, but uh, I'm trying to figure out how it's going to interact with my ability. Yeah, so I think, uh, uh, play a festival with this one, but I think, uh, did I give you a plot point act? Did we say plot point activation? Yeah. Right. So uh, I think you can, in this case, you're going at it instead of letting it go at you. So we're going to reverse the order of operations. You are actually instigating this contest in this case. Okay. So it has to be now a 15. Okay. Or a what? 15. No, uh, that was mine. That's bad. Oh, what? It was a 12. A 12. I've said it like four times. So yep. you can't it's okay, it. a lot's happening. A lot's happening. Um, all right. And, oh, no. Well, you got some stress. You can uh, you can spend a plot point and step it down if you like, but it did not beat your 12. Then Z right to the middle of it. Hell, <laughs> I don't even yes. know what it is. But I'm with it. Like, sting it. I love it. What kind of die is the die that you didn't use? That I did not use? Uh-huh. Um, I did not use a D10 and a D8. Oh, how nice. D, we're going to call the D10 your effect die, so that's it lost. So that is the stress that you do to it, is a D10. You beat the crap out of it. So, um, so do, I, do I roll this D10 now, or is it just a D10? No, it just adds a D10 level. <laughs> so all three of go ahead. Is it a half a lot? Oh, yeah. When, <laughs> it, when I hit it, I just look it right in the eye and it's got <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. Yes, absolutely. Right. The three of you avoid being grabbed, but now you can see there are three of these creatures in this pool uh, that have tried to grab at the three of you. Dramatic music. With its tentacles, you got a little surprise. 
Oh yes, and one of them does grab you and begins can, to pull you down. Yeah, go ahead. Can I say, because uh, remember before I did like, she does the Iron Maiden thing. Yeah. When it, after it is grabbed and is totally grabbed, uh, then it's like she's going to shoot out. Hell yes, you can. I am going to say, uh, since it dragged you down, you've got a D, what did I roll? A D8? A D8. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great, perfect. Put that pool together and you'll roll that up and I'll get to you in a moment. Banelock, you manage to slip free of the thing and Shuja is beating the hell out of this thing. I will also say you, Invicta, now, before you couldn't see what was happening, you just saw, right, whatever. As soon as Shuja starts wailing on this thing, these bright, colorful lights, very similar to the algae, but on these haplog bodies, these chromatophore cells, begin to light up and you can now see much more clearly because all three of them are lighting up what's happening down there and that was bad from what i recall when they light up it's not great but you know we know what it means <laughs> um but seeing seeing these haplock makes invicta furious yeah. and you know she was just gonna shoot it from afar uh -oh. oh no uh oh it is it is time for for invicta to use her her skills. Get in here on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> get, um, get in here. <laughs> and I'm going to use my um, talent battle as point of victory is because is is me yes. and, and so I'm going to run in Avatar Blade up. I'm just like all reason has left. These are half luck. They must die. Yeah. Um, so I need to add a D8 to my pool. Two questions for you. Do you have any stress? Yes, you gave me a D10. Oh, right, it was rough for you. Yes. Um, however, if you, would you, uh, are you, add a D6 to your pool if you would like, because one of them is now, uh, somewhat injured. <laughs> I got a 15. <laughs> yeah, I did not. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, so uh, which which one of your companions, because they've each got one sort of trying to tug at well. Well, she's just already like wailing on one. I'm going to let him have that. Sure. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I'm going to go after the one that's trying to pull. Okay, great. Oh my god, I forgot your guys' name. Wixen. I'm going to go after the one that is trying to pull Wixen down. Shit. So, you got a 15, and your effect die was a d12, uh, which means that you stab this thing in the eye and do a d12 of damage, of damage stress. Can I just, like, stab it in the eye and be like, ah, I got you. Absolutely. It's, now, to be very clear. I got you. To be very clear, it isn't dead, uh, but it's messed up, because I can't use it otherwise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I almost slipped. Sorry, I'll jumped up. It's all right. There you go. There you go. All right. So you all are in here. It is a melee. You are now exploding, and then I want to see what you do next. Wait, lock. You. You are blading 17. out seventeen. Holy oh, shit! Yeah. Um, yeah. For what it's worth, I get you... a ten and a seven on the D. Well, ten on the nice. and a seven on the D. If you would like, because Invicta just came in and stabbed the shit out of it, um, you could roll a d12 as well in your pool, because it has a d12 stress. The danger, of course, be you might roll a 1, but... Uh, I will then also roll very a well. plot point to step up the stress from a successful attack. Hell yes. Okay. What was your what was your total? Uh, 17. Mm -hmm. That's a 13 and a 1. Do you have any stress? Yes, uh, I just gave you a d8. Yes, I have uh, injured d8. So if you have an additional plot point, you can spend that to step your stress down to a d6. All right, but you are going to, you are going to tell, tell me how your body blade just finally rips this thing to pieces after, after Victor gave you a nice lead on it. Yeah, um, using a, using a type of whirlpool effect. I've, I've seen uh, squid like people do this in the documentaries. Uh, Wixen then like twirls herself around. <gasps> To then draw in the other yeah. tentacles to wrap it around her and then completely blades out. Yes. Um, well, they're like wrapped in. The water becomes opaque with this creature's blood yes. as your dagger in its eye and your everything and everything else uh, just rips it to pieces. I do want to find out what's going on with Banelock as you all take down one of these. Uh, Banelock sends Boko down to. Uh, Basically, in going into the water, Vulgo is below him. So uh -huh. he 
like presses against Bogo's feet to send him going through the water to basically uh, turn his snout into almost like a spearhead and spearhead it into the Havelock. Cool. Roll it up. 19. Okay. Oh. Uh, hell. Stress? Nope. You got rid of all. Moisturized <laughs> 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 and unbothered. <laughs> what color is Havelock blood? Don't find out. We're about to find out. What did you get? 19. God. I got an 18. No, I got a 16. That's not even true. Number. Um, but how many, uh, did you have other dice that are not included in that total? Uh, yes. And if so, what kind of dice are they? That's how you determine how much uh, stress you apply in Cortex. Uh, D6 and D8. We're going to call it a D8. So, yeah. Uh, uh, Volgo uh, just spears right into this thing. 12. This one is looking... Not great. It is going to try and grab you again in a moment, but I want to come this way to Shuja. Uh, you are wailing on it. You want to keep wailing on it? I mean, if it's still alive. Yeah. It just here. <laughs> it did. Oh, please. Do Havelocks have spines? Yeah. Because this is a very important moment for you. <laughs> you know, it's a very important they, moment for all spine rippers in Motherland. So. They, they don't because they're basically squid based. Squid can only the only bone is their beak sort of thing. Oh. But but you know who doesn't know that? He's uh <laughs> shoot, 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 so the spine ripper. Yeah. <laughs> Yanking just like put a foot on it. Just yes. Pulling it with oh. the tentacles here. Beak oh, yes. To try and take it apart. Ooh, and that's a 12 on the die, and a 10, that's a 22. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, do you have any stress? Uh, the 6. Great. That's, a ten, that's the 10 and the 12 on the 10 and the 12. Oh. This is for my people. <laughs> you have a 10 on my 10. And the, I'm, the I'm rolling so well, and you all are rolling bananas. I got an 18. Um, <laughs> actively attempting to take it. It apart. I'm looking for a spine to remove it. I just don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll remove its beak. That's exactly what I was going to say. I think you... Y'all are making me say these things that sound ridiculous. You find the, let's say, most solid, not hardest, part of the creature's body and rip it off. I don't know what this thing's into. I absolutely... <laughs> <laughs> it, might like, it might like being punished. Yeah, um, oh, you all are too good. I, I should stop playing with them. Yeah, you rip its beak off. With it comes, you know, some sort of trailing bits of, I don't know, nerves and circulatory system. It's just like confetti. It, I will say, in the midst of all of this in, insanity that is breaking loose, I do kind of pull it off and I just look at Whitson and say, I think I'll have a necklace now. Huh? <laughs> it is good to wear the bodies of your enemies. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> so, note to self, never be around Markia. <laughs> yeah. She just got her blades out. That's right. Don't lie. That's right. That's right. That's right. Don't lie. <laughs> I will say, is the one that Baymont uh, engaged Dan? I know Volko hit it hard. But it... Uh, hit it hard, but not quite finished off. I really, I'm That's... done with actions, but I move towards them. Like, I don't try and depart the water. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Of that. course not. Oh, no, no, no. That one's mine. Yeah. <laughs> Super gonna stab it with his beak. Um, oh. So. <laughs> Bane lock. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Invicted. That's right. You stabbed the thing and then I didn't come back to you. Yes. Oh, I'm going to finish this off. Hell yes. So. Now, with your dagger. Oh, of course. As you pull it out, it's a good thing you're underwater because, like, just slime. Because it was under fire, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Real gross. Oh, look at that. I've got an iris. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like, oh, yeah, look at that. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> do I still get to have that extra D6? I hate right? that. Uh, no, you actually can add a D12. Because <laughs> this thing is uh, very stressed out with you. Stress. <laughs> I feel like very stressed out squid being. You know, <laughs> the mood. That's a pandemic mood. Right. Are we not all very stressed out squid, squid beings? beings? <laughs> um, that is a 15. 15, anyone else? Two. All right. One, two, three, four. Stress? D10. D8. 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 Oh, you got to step down, right? Ooh, there's another. Do you have any plot points? Uh, yes. Okay, you can spend one and step that down again. I rolled all sevens under one, so 14. What was your total? 15. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. And it only had one step of stress left, so tell us about it, Invicta. Finish it off. Oh, yeah. Invicta just like beelines. It's almost like anime style. She's got her, her dagger out, and she just like cuts through it yes. to rip through and like 
just kind of like eviscerated and Absolutely. she's just like swearing in the most vulgar, high and old gutter language she can. And she just talks about like how this is revenge for everyone else. Mm-hmm. And she just pulls off the beak. Oh yeah. All these souvenirs. Look, I got one. Oh no, she doesn't want a souvenir. Oh good. She's, she's gonna mail it to <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have to write that down. If we have a fourth season, I think we have to start with that. But with no context. No, absolutely no, not. No oh, no. He's going to think it's a gift of cheese. Yeah. I'll get cheese made from the beak. Beak? Oh, oh, I'm going to get so much, so much worse. Beak cheese. If yeah. you are not familiar with our stream show, one of our characters from the stream show, A, is a big fan of cheese. Uh, there's no beak. Um, can the this beak is cheese. Beak, probably. Like, I mean, we have also cheese. <laughs> I guess we do. So, if I may, I think since uh, uh, Volgo is there as as uh, Invicta eviscerates and rips open, I feel like Volgo either like helps tear open or maybe gets in there and starts. I don't know. You tell me. Kind of just starts. Yeah. Let's start. Yeah. Yeah, it just helps tear it open, and then while you're busy with the beak, it's he's it's going enjoying the meal. Absolutely, yeah, just like, I absolutely. Just walk up very slowly, watching all this next to Baymuck, and I just kind of give him that same shoulder thing that I gave him. <laughs> and just kind of not. And, I, and I, I, I hold up my dagger, and I'm like, "Are you worthy yet? Are you ready?" <gasps> and yes. I just and keep on just covered in blood and blood. <laughs> So glad that this is on like four cameras that I just hit my head on the damn mic. I'm so happy that the internet gets to watch that. <laughs> it's like, I, I just look at it and I see that it's all dirty and I just like wipe it on my gauntlet to clean it off for it. And turn it back yes. to my And I just give him like, I give him that smile. That's right. Let's go to the devil. Yep. Mm-hmm. Taking that with me. Yep. As far as you can tell, this is a very deep pool, but it doesn't contain any more haplocks. Oh, good. One of the mics, so you're getting a little feedback. Mm-hmm. Just move one of them. Right? Mm-hmm. What? There aren't any more. You've killed them all. You've solved my haplock puzzle. Let's take a page from the back. Puzzle? <laughs> it was just a, it was a kill pond. Violence is a solution. Uh, oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Violence is not the answer. Violence is the question. The answer is yes. <laughs> Yes, when you activate in the morning, always choose bud. <laughs> Although, do look into, like, what were they doing? I mean, were they just, like, chilling? I mean, are they, were they, is there an experiment in the pool? Or we... I, I would assume they were mating. <laughs> oh, is, that, is, what you is that not what biologicals do? I... Is that not what the earlier creature we encountered wanted to do? I, I rest my case. <laughs> I didn't know you were named Phoenix. <laughs> Unfamiliar with the Hepalock in their ways, perhaps. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure it was not, they were not mating. They, for what it's worth, uh, you do notice a few things about them, and some of this would have to come with your assistance, Invicta, from having seen them before. Um, number one, you, until you brought them on board your ship, Invicta, last time, and took them out, you had never seen one without a suit. These were not wearing any sort of, like, land-walking suits, or I suppose in that case, space-walking. Um, they was naked. Uh... Other than that, um, other than that, there doesn't seem to be any indication of what they were doing. But what you do notice, Shuja, since you've been keeping an eye on this the whole time anyway, what you do notice is that there is a uh, a couple of lines of that bioluminescent algae that is a lit up and B, leading down deep into this pool. Best you can figure, maybe these were the ones that had been alerted and were, are, wait, were waiting, and then you won't ruin their ambush. It's totally fine. <laughs> I mean, the ambush went off. <laughs> well, that's true, I guess. <laughs> Just, they didn't expect us to run into the ambush. Yeah. ambush. Oh, it's another ambush inception. We have that in Rivals the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a pattern with you and me. Apparently. <laughs> I, do, I do point that out. I just say that I believe these were the guards. Unfortunately, they did not expect us to do what we do. Yes, this is what our team is very efficient at doing. We should probably move quickly before reinforcements arrive. Mm. And I will just say the moment Volgo stops eating, because I don't inter- interrupt at any time. Good. 
once he like turns around, then again he gets the <laughs> 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 Well you don't talk about the floor without more. Invicta. If I may say, I very much enjoyed your efficient killing that just happened. Oh. I hope to incorporate that into my programming for when we interact with more Apollons. You are a very efficient being at killing. More than killing. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I think for now we have the data we need. The reason I had to go eat them is because he can then uh, vomit them out to study the bodies. Uh, Just don't do it around my quarters. <laughs> um, why would I do that? I don't know. This. I mean, he's a very cute and adorable, whatever he is, <laughs> but pets don't know anyone's dope. Never mind. Let's let's just see if there's anyone alive. No, screw that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, screw that. There's two more doors. We must look. Come on, friend. We must Why? Look. I immediately go to the other door. Yes. And I'm like, yes, yes, more yes. Of this we, we have to recover more data. Right. The data but, was the second most important thing, and the first thing does not matter anymore. Bodies are data. data. You brats. You, you went over this. We have. I'm like, come along, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, so you can you can peek into uh, the first the two rooms that have the blood leading to them. Um, and one of the rooms is just full of uh, tanks, tall tanks that go from floor to ceiling, filled with water, and they all have various surface culture people obviously dead inside of them. If you search around for a little while, there, there's no one else in here. There aren't any Hapalux in this room. Uh, but if you search around, you do eventually find... Uh, go ahead. I, just say I walk right up to one of them, and I say, I saw a hollow video like this once, and I pull my knife out, and I tap on the tank to see if it opens its eyes. <laughs> Um, it, it does not, but as you get closer, you can see that there are strips of that algae, again. Uh, very, as, you, as you sort of get close and tap and just the barest bit of kinetic energy reaches the algae, they all light up and there's only a single color for this algae here, which is sort of unusual based on what you've seen. On the people? No, on the tank. Almost as if, well, I can't say that. Almost as if nothing. There is algae on the tank. Right. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> no. Um, I think I'll make a perception roll. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird to have you guys run against an enemy that nobody knows anything about. <laughs> Except one. Well, but even you don't like know how they communicate and how they X, Y, Z, so I have to, be, I have to tread lightly. Um, one could speculate that there is a symbiotic relationship between the algae and the hapalots. Perhaps there's some way to use that against them. The Salonzi, of course, exists this very way. It is not such a difficult leap of logic. Uh, do you not have a literal symbiotic relationship yourself? And I, yes, but I was just thinking you would speak of the nature of my connectedness. You literally got a, like a symbiote in your body. I mean, yes. <laughs> At least among us doesn't have a symbiote in their body. I love it. We're gonna leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, the person in the torch, that you do find a person in a torch uniform, uh, uh, no dive suit, uh, which seems to maybe have been the problem. Uh, and this is uh, your Musalian woman. Um, and she does seem to, to no longer be living in her tank. Considering we've all got cell phones, is it a reasonable assumption that we have some sort of photographic? Because yeah. I want to take pictures of all these people. They have me. Absolutely. That means yeah, yeah. nothing to me, but I'm all like, but somebody it means something to something. Right, exactly. Right, exactly. Somebody will care. I'm, I'm like, maybe I can collect the bounty. No. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. It starts running facial recognition immediately. Mm -hmm. Looking for bounties. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Bash the stampede. What? <laughs> I, and Vic is looking around. It's like, are the instruments in the room still working? I'm not sure how to answer that because as far as you recognize, aside from the tanks, there's nothing in the room. Oh. And there's, I don't know, dozen, 20 maybe. Um, I suppose you could count them exactly. There are 16 of them. 
Mm-hmm. Any high and all? Uh, yeah, a couple of high and all, uh, a few. Uh, there are Musalians, high and all, and uh, Misajai, which you can sort of identify from their symbiote markings. There don't seem to be any Salonsi or Mansa gaming. Okay. Are there oh. any um, interfaces in the room that an AI connect with? Uh, that an AI could that an AI could connect with? Probably not. The closest thing to an interface is the algae. Other than that, it's just like glass tanks. Mm. Uh, if you all were to, I'm seeing our time, so I'm going to move you to the other side of the hall. Uh, that's the one. Um, the other side where the blood led, uh, in here is, this looks much more like a lab with uh, electronics and things, though the interfaces that you see that they have put together aren't like anything you've seen. So in the center of this lab um, are various consoles, and all of them have uh, uh, different numbers of what just look like uh, like holes, jacks or something, right, in the surface of them. Half of the room is given up to uh, a one large water tank that is full of a half dozen, again, Salonsi, uh, not sorry, not Salonsi, uh, Heinel, Misajai, and Musalians. And these people have various, in various places, have tentacles grafted to them. Some of them have had their arms replaced. Some of them have had their legs replaced. Some of them have had their arms and legs kept intact, but their digits have been replaced. Uh, There's one with a nose tentacle. Um, And they all also appear to no longer be uh, living. The other side of the room, there are non-aquatic cells. And in these rooms, there are, again, six people lying on what look like metal, I guess you could call them cots. And each of them has, in, again, in different places, sets of what look like light and color emitting chromatophores. Uh, some of them have them up and down their face. Some of them have them on their arms and legs. And one, a Misa Jai woman, is lying, they're all lying, eyes open, staring up, breathing, but otherwise not moving. This Misa Jai woman who is wearing a torch uniform, no dive suit, seems to have these colored chromatophores in her eyes. Her eyes have become colorful headlines. As Misa Jai, we are symbiotic creatures, that is true. We don't just speak of it openly, but fine. That's a. <laughs> is, is there we're talking about everything else <laughs> uh, would I have any reasonable expectation of my symbiote being able to connect with her symbiote um because we have energetic it's an it, energetic symbiosis yeah 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 yes if, it, if, if you're playing any other character I'd be like well there's a whole ritual and it's sort of a little taboo I don't think you care one force like, yeah <laughs> so, so yes um, it would be uh Yes, I will just say yes. I'm only looking for one thing. Is her mind still in there? Like, if there's something something salvageable, I will try and get her out of here. Yeah. If she's basically just a body now, I will not. So what I think happens is you do exactly what you said. You are able to sort of link with the symbiote, yeah, with the Minibi. Um, And it, it is mostly intact, but it sends to you in whatever form of communication that is, that she is not, and that and that this Minabai only has a little time left. Just get it to tell me whatever it can before yeah. I, I bless it with the warrior's death. Um, and it's all sort of, uh, you know, I don't think it's verbal. I think it's mm-hmm. images and feelings and things, and you get the sense of incredible pain uh, and bright lights, but then total darkness. Um, and then you do, it does send to you words. And it doesn't really matter what the words are because that isn't the point it's trying to make. But as it sends you words, it also sends you color patterns and light patterns. And what you sort of get from it is that this person and the others who had the chromatophores transplanted were basically experiments of the Hapalox to try to find a way to link up methods of communication. And what you have learned, that I have spent 
a season and a half of the stream and all of today trying not to say out loud, is that the haplocks communicate with these chromatophores through light and color and patterns. They have no oral, verbal, whatever. Um, and so these people here were an attempt to bridge that gap with, with surfacers. When Knowledge by symbiosis. I tell everybody this, and you see, I just sort of like brush her hair back, like uncharacteristically gently for Shuja, and I turn her Shuja, head. Shuja, before you do what I think you are about to do, is there a possibility, if we could connect some of the emotions to the lights before this one is terminated, maybe you could ask through your symbiote, uh, show stuff or show fight, show angry, show happy. You see that spike on the back of his gauntlet? Uh -huh. Just very gently puts it right behind her ear. Yeah. Or and not. And then looks at her and says, she's done enough. Yeah. <laughs> and then pulls his knife and looks at the rest of them. And unless you guys stop me, he goes down the line and he will use the knife at the base of their neck. It's like, yeah. <laughs> quick and painless. Yeah. Yeah. And then Victor what? will help. <laughs> yeah, w wooden stuff would help. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, although I do recount what it told me. Sure, so sure. I'm trying to keep any of that a secret. But yeah. Warrior's death, quick and sightless. <laughs> yep. Um, there are, you know, if you looked around, there are, uh, we already said there are interfaces here. Um, there is a, a couple of boxes on the, on the tentacle graph side that have spare tentacles. Uh, we'll but this look that, though. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and, and it looks like this was sort of an experimentation lab uh, that that at least two of the of the torch agents ended up in. So they are attempting to communicate. Just the way that they are doing it is not efficient. Mm. This is an efficiency. This is a takeover. But I think we have enough. Yes. If we stay. We put ourselves in position for more danger. I know you want vengeance, but that was not why we came here. That was not the job. Yes, we should go and then have them bombard this place from orbit. There are no survivors, therefore the top priority was recovering data, and that is what we have. Yes. Do we have a reasonable way to get back to the sub? Because we swam down and there was current, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, what a great question. Um, definitely not the way you came, but... Uh, GPS! <laughs> <laughs> Wixen, you, uh, you can oh, sort of... look! My GPS has come into effect. That's why I asked about it initially. <laughs> <laughs> Through a combination of said GPS. Oh, you're so sorry, don't mess with this way. <laughs> Through a combination of the GPS and uh, you, you had mentioned earlier that you thought that maybe the pool, the first pool that you found had some method of egress. Not all of them do, but you're able to find one that does. Uh, and sort of, it's it's quite a maze, but you have, again, the GPS. Uh, so you can you can make it out that way. We should way. start bringing explosives with us. It would be much more. Does Wixen beep as you try. closer to the sun? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, you were right. You were right about yeah. it the entire time. Not all artificial intelligence yes. life forms be. How dare you? I, look, I just asked. I don't know how you locate something in your geotag. <laughs> they beep when you push the right button. Oh, that's, I don't know if I want to push those buttons. I love it. Thanks so much. I mean, at least not for that one. Oh. Dave, I'm not writing about that either. So. <laughs> I think just don't explode. tag me on AO3 if I <laughs> Some things roll to the lead desire to the <laughs> Yes. Incredible. Uh, yeah. So you all are able to get back out to your sub. You've collected what data you had. You have, you know, um, you were able to report back on most of the team. Uh, and you can take the sub back to Kusili, the transport back to Torch, and that's that. As your submersible pilots away from the, the big underwater Hapalog gun, we rush back through the grate, through the tunnels, uh, over the waterfall, through the door, down the hallway, to the door at the very end of the hallway. There was no blood heading that way. There was no indication of anything there. And we pass through the doors, and we see an enormous chamber. And all around it are more of those 
uh, consoles, interfaces, whatever. Each of them with a thick tube running from the ceiling down into the input jack. And at the center of the room, in a fairly large, spacious cell that has been outfitted with a cot and a chair, is a misogyne who turns to our imaginary camera. And we see, much like the misogyne in the other room, eyes, colorful eyes that have been transport, uh, transplanted with chromatophores. And as we zoom out from this person a little bit, we do see that their arms and their legs have been replaced with tentacles. Turn this sub around. <laughs> as we see them, they look up and their eyes flash a sequence of colors and patterns. And the ceiling of this space begins to come down. And we see that the tubes that were leading to the jacks are not in fact tubes, but enormous tentacles oh. that lead to a hapalock many orders of magnitude larger than any you encountered in the pools. And there is a response of colors along the sort of frills of its head. And the tentacles retract. The uh, hapalock returns into the ceiling and we see a ship take off, rising up through the ocean once you all are well back to Kusili, rising up through the ocean and straight up and out of the atmosphere with a little bit more knowledge. So everyone learned something today. And that's where we'll finish our very first live and in-person game of Intelligence. Young people that had no time, I started <laughs> Thank you all so, so much for coming and hanging out and being here with us for this very first, uh, for this very first live and in-person game. We appreciate you all so much. Um, if you want to see more of this, uh, you can find us on your channel. Yes, on uh, on uh, Tanya's YouTube, Cypher Tears YouTube, uh, where three seasons, 32 episodes uh, of Into the Motherlands are. So you can find out all about Invicta's other crew, all about the first time she met the Hapalocks, and lots, lots more. It still uh, support the game on Kickstarter, too. It funded, but you still can back it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You want to say more about where it happened? Or okay. Kickstarter into the Motherlands. There you go. The motherland. There you go. Um, <laughs> like .net.org. <laughs> uh, yeah, we uh, we are aiming. Uh, we are in the process of writing our setting uh, and rules book, and we are very very excited about it. Um, is there anything else we should mention about Motherland? Uh, the whales will meet with ships. Let's gain a chapter. Uh, hey, I will do it. Do not test me. Um, season four TBD. Um, if you really want to see a season four, uh, tweet out that you you miss the Motherlands. So I can be like, look, Twitch, people want more. Um, but seriously, thank you all for coming out. It means yeah. a lot. And, you know, thanks to SCCC for even off, you know, offering for us to, to do a live show yeah. before the book is out, before anything else is out. Um, but yeah, follow all of us. Yeah, well, um, should we go down real, just very fast? Yes, because I know Dave has to run for yeah, a Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know you do. Family. You want to start us off? In 10 minutes, yeah. Hi, I'm Dave Walters, one of the hosts on G4, uh, Dungeon Master of uh, the Black Dice Society, our game. Uh, you can find me where refined streaming content can be located uh, at Dave Walters all over the Tweety Grams. Uh, you can find me everywhere, Cypher of Tears, C-Y-P-H-E-R-O-F-T-Y-R. Um, again, you can find me on Thursdays with B Dave. We have not announced our new date, correct? New, no, but it's coming um, back in January. We will return. Um, Black Dice will be back in January. Um, Rivals is back on Sunday. Obviously, not tomorrow because we're here. Uh, but December 5th will be our penultimate episode. If you'll be in a plug, we will be there for our season finale. Main stage, so twitch.tv slash packs if you're not there. Yeah. And then, you know, find me on my own channel and all the Twitters and everywhere else. Hey. Uh, I'm Eugenio. I am the storyteller for Into the Motherlands. I'm also the co-DM for Rivals of Waterdeep. Uh, uh, I was nervous at all. That's a lie. Um, you did I, great, honey. Thank you, babe. I also stream on my own channel. You can find out everything that I'm up to uh, on Twitter at DM Jazzy Hands. Oh, 
Hey, I'm Markeia McCarty. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Markeia McCarty. That's M-A-R-K-E-I-A-M-C-C-A-R-T-Y. Facebook is Markeia TV. And then for Twitch and TikTok, it is Darth Markeia. Yes. I love that. Dark side. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm a professional TTRPG player, voiceover actor. Um, if you haven't checked out Something Scary on YouTube, that's youtube.com slash snarled. Uh, we do animated horror videos. Uh, that's weekly. Plus, there's a podcast. You will find Something Scary wherever you find your podcast. So yeah, uh, go ahead and check that out and uh, let's connect over the social medias. And I'm Gabe Hicks, Gabe James Games across the internet. Uh, Storyteller on Dimension 20 Street Week, our finale comes up this upcoming Wednesday. Yeah. Um, I'm all over the place, I don't know. Sleep is not something that I do anymore. Uh, so if you find anything on social media, just Gabe James Games, there's all kind of nonsense. Or some people know me as the unicorn man, but that's a different, that sounds way worse. Yeah, Tony <laughs> Thank you all so, so much Thank once you. again.